All right, y'all, we are live for the 2023 NHL Draft. We got 30 minutes to go until it starts, and we are here, y'all. If you guys are joining us in the replay, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're going to be giving scouting reports, reviews, and we're going to be breaking down every single pick with every single trade. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Stick with us tonight. We already got Govich coming in here. Wicked, what is going on, y'all? It is draft day, folks. We are here. We got 30 minutes to go. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Say hello in the chat if you guys are just dropping by. Let's get this stream bopping, y'all. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing folks and i am just on so many pins and needles man this game this this whole thing is just looking insane i mean we got the rumors recently of the Habs potentially going up to the fifth overall pick i mean i don't even know what's supposed to be happening right now i can't even lie <laughs> I don't know what's supposed to be happening right now, but so much is going to go down tonight. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and it's going to be nuts. We got Toxic, we got Hockey Arcade, Auto, Codester, Liam, what's going on? Everybody in the chat down below, I want to know to start this live stream. What is your hot take for this 2023 first round? What do you guys see happening? Because this whole first round is going to be absolutely wild. I mean, we've seen tons of rumors surrounding Fantilli, around Carlson, around Michkov, where they could potentially go. Right now... I mean, dude, it, it's just out of this world. There's so many different options, and this entire process has been just the craziest thing of all time. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I am so excited, though. You know what? Let's all get some Ws in the chat as well. If you guys are excited for the 2023 draft, let us know down below. Get some hype, because it's going to be nuts. All right? It's going to be wild. Now, I'm supposed to... I, I have my draft simulator up but it's not working for me at all and i don't understand why it's not working for me it's just being really stupid right now i think it's just because so many people are using it but um we'll see what happens we'll see what happens we got 170 already in the chat y'all we are here it is draft time so many next level studs are going to be drafted tonight and we're going to find out where every single one of them goes this draft class is insane it's deep it's r impactful right at the very top and all throughout the first round so you won't want to miss a thing because it's going to be crazy don what's going on uh spy hello welcome to the tra chat national pack is uh, packages and scare off for fifth overall meaning teams in the central are screwed yeah so as we saw just a little bit of go frank Cirelli was talking about a scare off potentially being traded from the national predators i want to know in the chat down below everybody where do you see a scare off landing because i mean if a scare off is gonna be traded tonight that's gonna be wild well i mean there was the rumors of barry trotz and the preds wanting to go up in the draft wanting to get inside that top 10 we'll see if a scare off is their ticket to that snake thank you so much for subscribing um it says rough trade price for chicago to get 11 from vancouver i mean i think it would definitely take that 19th overall pick the blackhawks have i think that is for sure something that we'd see moved if there is going to be a blackhawks trading up i would say though i i don't really see how likely that, I, that is just because of i mean the preds already wanting to go inside the top 10 so i feel like if we're going to see any preds trade with that pick it'll be them moving up in the draft Nicholas, what's going on? Could you see the Habs training down to 15 against Scare on Preds home with draft splash? The Preds are cooking something right now, man. They are cooking something. We'll have to wait and see. I don't know if it'll be with the Habs, but I mean, there was the rumors of the Habs training down, so we'll have to find out, folks. It's going to be nuts tonight. It is going to be nuts tonight. I am so freaking excited, man. So freaking excited. Logan, my favorite team is the Dallas Stars. Unfortunately, no first round pick. <laughs> Hey, Grav, do you think the Canes move their pick for an asset? No, I think they stick. I think they stick with, with their spot currently. I mean, I don't feel like the Canes are in a position where... I mean, they don't... I feel like if they might move if they might move down, maybe, and maybe get a couple more picks, they like to go for a lot of qual, uh, quantity over pure quality, so we'll see what happens. But thank you, Nicholas, again for the 22 months, man. Absolute legend. Right now, we got 25 minutes to go until the NHL draft starts, and we're going to be getting underway here. I mean, I am so nervous <laughs> i don't know what's about to go down y'all it's gonna be insane y'all we are also two likes away from 50 so let's get that done but of course we got all the top end guys to talk about bedard fantilli carlson mh Cobb. i mean i i feel like what we've seen recently at least there might be some leaning towards mitch Cobb being the habs draft pick at fifth overall so we'll have to wait and see it, it's kind of all over the place right now but it looks like it looks like he could end up being the pick there, which would be wild. Let us know, yes or no, is Mitchkov the pick for the Montreal Canadiens? I guess we'll have to find out. I honestly, though, like, it, I, 
it's funny because Ken Hughes has been so so consistently secret about what's happening and what we'd actually see here it's just I feel like with with Ken Hughes if it was just a if it was just a you know a, a screen uh almost like a a, a wind in the fact if we saw if we saw Kent Hughes bluffing on all this time and, and everything like that I mean it would be just so funny to see that happen if we actually see Mitch in the pick after how much we talked about it and potentially potentially being a Leonard potentially being a Reinbacher we'll see what happens but uh all we know as well is that we saw Philadelphia out of the race for Mitch we saw that most likely being the case oh boys I finally got it going oh my goodness finally finally all right now we can get going with our mock draft here i don't know why it was so laggy that was so weird it wasn't letting me actually make my uh, make the list it was super weird but now we can start our final mock draft for the 2023 nhl draft chicago hockey with the two thank you for the nono king bedard for fan silly and a 2024 first chicago you're you're that it seems like a joke comment but like that actually might be what it would take <laughs> it would be massive man massive thank you so much events for subscribing and of course guys if you want draft content all throughout the year this is the channel to be at we got scouting reports rankings mock drafts all throughout the year and after this draft we'll be of course pointing on to the 2024 draft which has some big studs as well with players like cole eiserman and macklin celebrini so a lot of content in the future that you will not want to miss out on but we want to see you there for all of it um let me get uh let me get it um actually up on the screen here so i can get it for you guys so i can actually get my personal mock draft up there too um where is it okay here it goes all right now we can get started with the 2023 mock draft boys it is time let's do this thing all right so i want to also know what you guys think in the chat down below as we go through this i don't know how much time we'll have hopefully we can get to the top 32 but we'll see what happens Joseph, hope your day is doing well, going well. Grab it. Who do you think the Caps are going to draft at eight? Right now, it's seeming like Reinbacher could be potentially the guy there at eight, which would be wild. I mean, if Mishka is available, then I think he's still the pick there, but we'll get into it. Uh, thank you, Joseph, for the five. Appreciate you, my man. Love to see it. Let's get some Joseph slash Boo Boo hype. Changing the uh, username. <laughs> thank you, brother. Appreciate him. Yeah, so in the last mock draft, uh, I've just completely spaced out and didn't include Perot and Edward Shale. They are on this list here, so no worries about that. But I want to know in the chat down below, what are you guys thinking for an early prediction of this top five? What are we thinking here? Do you think it's going to be Bedard, Fantilli, Carlson, Smith, and maybe Amichkov at number five? What do you guys think are going to be the top five picks in this 2023 draft? Because as of right now, I'm not really sure. Because I feel like it's... I feel like we've seen some interest recently from the Blue Jackets and Will Smith. We heard that reported that they've really liked Will Smith and really like what he he's brought and, and and he could be a fit there in Columbus. We'll have to see what happens there, but it could be maybe Will Smith going up to number three. We'll have to wait and see on that a lot right now, though. That's kind of up in the air. So I'm going to go into my predictions first off. And again, let us know what you guys are thinking. What do we see here tonight in the top five? We got Blackhawks, Ducks, Blue Jackets, Sharks, and Habs. I think first things first, I mean, we just got, we got to make it happen, right? I mean, Connor Bernard will go first overall. There's no doubt about that. You can see what Connor Bernard has done and just what the, 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 the amount of work that he's had just all throughout the years. He's just been a consistent beast in every single position he's played in, every single tournament he's been at. But that shot, that creativity, that vision, that work ethic, it's all at that elite generational level. And he's the best prospect since Connor McDavid. And it's not a hot take saying that, but it's what he's become with that work ethic, with that skill. So Connor Bernard will be the first overall pick. And that's not surprising anybody. <laughs> if you were surprised by that pick, hit that like button. <laughs> But now we go into number two, and we've seen a lot of weirdness surrounding this pick and the rumors surrounding this as well. Because we all assume it's going to be Adam Fantilli, right? We all assume he's going to be Adam Fantilli. Maurice, what's going on? And by the way, let me give a shout out to everybody in this chat. We got Adam, Alexandre, Andre, Austin, Brody, Caden, Caleb, Cap, Chicago Hockey, Chris, Clone Commando, Cole, Daniel, Dave, Don, Duke, Dylan, Ejack, Freeman, Jordan. I don't exist. Ivan, JT, Jake, Jacob, Jamie, Janice, Je Jedi, Joe, John, Jonah, uh, Joshua, Ku Julie, Justin, Kaplan, 
Kanex, we got Kyle, LC, Mackle, Mason, Metatron, Maurice, Mr. Bloopy, Mr. Lanzio, Mixture Sharkfin, uh, Nathan Edis, Nicholas, Nicholas, as well as off the boards. We got Optic, Orange Boy, Otter, Pacendi, Phil, Prescott, Raphael, Richard, Reichel, SP, Search Sniper. We got Shane, Solid Snake in here. We got some person, uh, Thiasine, Tibalt, Tommy, Berm, Virtuoso, Joseph, aka Vuvu, William, X Ray, and Zachary. Thank you all for coming in here tonight for the 2023 NHL Draft live stream. If you guys are just coming in, hit that like button. We're going to give you every single pick, every single trade as it goes live. So do not go anywhere. This is the place to be. And we're going to be breaking it all down right here, right now. Right now, we're going through our mock draft. We'll see if we see any trades leading up to this draft. There could be some heavy movement right now. We'll see what happens. Eyes, thank you so much for subscribing. Also, uh, from Anthony DeMarco, apparently the Flames have expressed interest in Travis Sanheim. Not sure if a deal ultimately gets done, but they been circulating i wonder if swapping first round picks was in play too so looks like the flames might be going in on travis sandheim for the philadelphia flyers we'll have to wait and see there but uh it could be it could be a wild draft night y'all we could see a lot of teams moving up in terms of actual rumors there we've heard a lot about the habs potentially dropping down in this draft we heard of course rumors about the washington capitals maybe moving up the philly the flyers also potentially moving up there too the phillies <laughs> it's like the first time i've actually done that colton what's going on good to see you tonight but a lot of potential here, as well as the Preds. Apparently, Barry Trotz is wanting to go into that top 10 in this draft. We'll see if he can actually get it done here tonight. But it's going to be a wild one, y'all. It's going to be a wild one, and we want to see you here all throughout. 60 Second Cinema, what's going on? And also, of course, thank you to all the members, all the donators throughout the stream, because y'all are the MVPs. You guys know that I do this for a full-time job, so if you guys are enjoying, donating is the best way to help me and support the channel and everything, and it really goes a long way. But it looks like, again, it looks like Sanheim could be trending towards the calgary flames we'll see if a trade gets done tonight apparently the asking price is a first so we'll see if that actually does get done uh, it, it's kind of shaky though so we'll see jordan thank you for the dono how excited are we hope mtl gets will smith man we are we are going crazy right now jordan thank you for the seven dollars let's get some jordan hype in the chat down below and let me get him as the last donator there too love to see it appreciate it a lot and thank you magnus for subscribing as well all right Kenji, thank you for the 279. Did it start yet? No, it'll be starting at six, at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. 7 p.m. Eastern. Thank you, Kenji, for the dono. I appreciate you. And if you guys also want any questions asked immediately, donations is a great way to go about it. Nylander is going nowhere. I mean, Neil, we saw a little bit around Nylander, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect him to get traded. I personally... <laughs> I personally wouldn't see that. Oh, so interesting news here as well on the Habs pick fifth overall, apparently from Michael Gallagher of Nashville Hockey. Now the Preds have talked about or have offered to the, uh, you guys ready for this? So apparently the Preds have offered something massive to the Montreal Canadiens here for that fifth overall pick. Looks like as of right now, the offer for the Preds is 15th overall, 24th and a Scarab. But as of right now, according to Michael Gallagher, it's not enough for the Habs to get rid of that fifth overall pick. They got to be picking Mitch Cobb then, right? You'd have to think. You'd have to think, man. I mean, this is crazy. Drew, thank you for the two. Thoughts on the new hook trade. I think it's a really interesting one for both teams. I mean, you saw the Avs getting a... Uh, I mean, you saw the Avs getting Ross Colton for their second round pick. They got in that deal, which I think is amazing for them. And they also, again, keep that first round pick. Um, but I think for the Habs, Marty St. Louis and Newhook could rebound there in a big way. I hope. I hope. We'll see. <laughs> But thank you, Drew. Appreciate it. And let me get you as the last donator now. Love to see it. Thank you, Drew. Love you, man. All right. So now let's go on to the second overall pick here in the Anaheim Ducks. I think it still will be Adam Fantilli in the end. I mean, it's just been the consensus, even though there have been some rumors of maybe them picking even Michkov second overall. We saw a little bit of cold water put on that the last couple of hours. Leo Carlson, is it still in play? We've heard that the Ducks like him a lot, but I'm still going to pick Adam Fantilli here. At number three, this is weird because we've heard a lot of Will Smith potentially being the pick here for Columbus today, and that seems to be a little bit of a trend, but I still think they're going to end up picking Leo Carlson and going for the consensus there. Maybe a little bit of a smoke screen. We'll see what happens there, but I think Leo Carlson will still be the pick third overall. Let us know down below as well what your predictions are for the top five as we go through it, but for fourth overall, I think it will be Will Smith. If the Sharks do have the chance at Will Smith, I think they will still take him. There is the slight rumors there of maybe Ryan Leonard being their pick, but to me, I think they need a center. I think Will Smith fits them quite a bit, and I think they will go for him. I don't think we'll see Mitchkov as, as their pick there, but we'll see. 
Now on to fifth overall and the Montreal Canadiens. You know what? A few, even a few days ago, it was the rumor that Ryan Leonard would be the Habs pick. Now it's looking like Matthew Michkov will be the guy. And you know what? Let's just let's just go for it. Especially since apparently 15 and 24 and a scare off isn't enough for the Habs. I feel like for Montreal, Michkov will end up being the pick. If they're not going to get away with that pick, I feel like they're going to go for the higher upside. And I think Michkov still makes a lot of sense for them. Now going on to sixth overall. I mean, this one we've seen a lot of rumors about. This could be a pick where maybe even a team like the Capitals still are able to be a team that rises up maybe the preds end up uh actually trading up to this spot but if it does still stay arizona i'm gonna say david reinbacher is the guy for them i mean reinbacher would be an interesting addition we've already gone through it a lot on the channel mock wise because reinbacher has almost always been my pick for the oats but i, I think it's that physical two-way d who can skate well who can pass the puck well and can be pretty physical even if he's a little bit raw to me again he still kind of reminds me of like a mini david Juracek from last year we'll see if he transitions that way jay thank you so much for subbing and of course y'all if you guys are enjoying the breakdowns we're gonna be giving you all the scouting reports on every single pick and breaking down every single trade as it goes but we'll see here and at number seven i think it will be ryan leonard if the flyers have a chance at ryan leonard i think it will be him maybe we'll see zach benson pick there but i wouldn't assume it honestly i feel like it will be fl the flyers picking ryan leonard there if the habs aren't going to end up taking him ava thank you and welcome to the ground gang stud tear oh my goodness thank you ava appreciate it what's going on good luck to the red wings tonight we'll see what happens <laughs> Olavi, thank you so much for subbing as well. Me and Grav have the exact same mock through six, uh, six picks. Ain't no way. I mean, I, I feel like this top six, if Michkov does go to Montreal, I feel like it's pretty locked in. I feel like it's pretty locked in. Also, from Kevin Weeks, I'm hearing there's a chance the Preds' top goalie prospect could be on the move, perhaps via, Can via the Canadians. Apparently, Kevin Weeks is linking a scare off to the Montreal Canadiens, folks. Will we see that fifth overall pick traded? What is going on? Holy crap. <laughs> Bro, are we going to actually see a Scarab acquired by the Habs tonight? Let us know down below. One for yes, two for no. Will a Scarab be a Montreal Canadian after tonight? This could be wild, man. If the Preds go up to fifth overall, that would be insane. Oh my goodness, man. Oh my goodness. So yeah, again, from the tweet from Kevin Weeks, he says, hearing there's a chance... The Preds' top goalie prospect could be on the move via trade, perhaps, to the Montreal Canadiens. That is wild. That is wild. We saw, of course, apparently, according to Gallagher, apparently, the 15th, 24th pick and Askarov wasn't enough for the Habs to get rid of that fifth overall pick. Maybe they just, maybe they just chose a different direction. We'll see. But it looks like Askarov could be heading to the Montreal Canadiens. That is a brilliant acquisition if it's montreal now we'll see what the trade price actually ends up being i'm not sure how i would like giving up the picks that they're giving if it is that but i mean i do love the idea of a in montreal to me he's such a athletic such a electrifying goaltender jens thank you so much for subscribing and the body of work he's had over the past few years has been insane um so we'll see what happens but it looks like the Habs could be in on a scarab which would be nuts let us know though what would you trade for a scarab if you're montreal do you get rid of that fifth overall pick because I feel like that's what would have to be would have to be a part of it. You'd have, I think like that fifth overall pick would be the main centerpiece going back to, to Nashville. And again, like we saw before, it would include that say, that uh, 50, that 60th overall pick or whatever it was that Nashville has, that 24th overall pick, and a scarab on top of that. That is a heavy haul for the Montreal Canadiens. But if it is those two first round picks and a scarab, I personally might not even mind that, especially if the Habs aren't going to be taking Michkov anyways. If they're not going to be taking Michkov, they're going to be taking a player like Ryan Leonard. I take that trade from Montreal every day of the week. I mean, I think Gascaro could be a great starter for them, and the depth that you could get from those two picks would be amazing, in my opinion. Now, of course, with the with the Preds, they have their two first round picks. They got 15th overall, and they got 24th overall in that Edmonton Ekholm trade. So we'll see if the Preds are able to give up a ton of draft capital here. It looks like they might be moving up. And again, we heard the rumors that Barry Trotz wants to move up in this draft. He wants to get in that top 10. So we'll see if he gets it done. But right now, y'all, we are at 69,600. 28 subscribers thank you guys so much for joining us tonight if you guys are just coming in here we have prospect content all throughout the year and we're going to be breaking down every single pick every single trade as it happens tonight so you will not want to go anywhere stick with us tonight hit that like button if you're enjoying and subscribe if you're new because you will not want to miss any of the content as we get further into this but 
it, and from what we know as of right now let's keep going with that eighth overall pick and to me i feel like with this type of pick it would be interesting because i think the caps have a lot of different chances a lot of different opportunities here but i feel like if uh, it, it's so hard because i could see them going for a player like Dvorsky, but i have a slight feeling that they might go for zach benson here i feel like the for the caps benson does make a lot of sense we'll see I'll try to get through this top 16 at the very least, but I'm going to have Benson going to the Caps. For number nine, this one's kind of weird for Detroit. Uh, we know there's a lot of different guys they've been looking at, and no nobody that's really truly locked in, but I feel like at number nine, it would be Dvorsky uh, then at that point. Steven, thank you so much for subscribing. Dvorsky, I think, makes sense for them. Maybe it's a Gabe Perot. Perhaps we could see that. I feel like they've kind of... Oh, from what we've seen, at least the stock of Oliver Moore specifically has kind of gone down a little bit. So I think Dvorsky might be the pick there. And number 10, we've heard that uh, St. Louis may be going after a defenseman here, which would be wild. But to me, I think they're going to end up going for a forward still here. And I, I still think for them, it makes a lot of sense to go after a centerman. But there's not a ton of amazing options there. But that's the that's the thing, especially with Dvorsky being gone. I think Dvorsky would have absolutely been the Blues pick at number 10. That's the thing. But I have a feeling at number 10, I... <laughs> I just have that slight feeling, man, that it's going to be Nate Danielson. I had it in my last mock. I just feel like he fits so well with the Blues. Maybe we see them maybe drop back in the draft a little bit, just maybe to like around 14. Maybe if the Preds can't secure a top 10 pick, they go, or can't secure that Habs pick, maybe they go to number 10 with St. Louis and try to work a deal there. But I think Nate Danielson makes a lot of sense for the Blues, that physical two-way game with great leadership. I think the Blues will definitely be in on that. Then at number 10 and the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, to me, it's another pick that has a lot of options for the Canucks, but I feel like for them, if a player, if, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, we've, we've talked about it before. I think Tom Willander will definitely be the pick for the Canucks. I mean, he's a player that they've got a lot of interest in, has already been confirmed to have a lot of interest in. I think at number 11, he brings a lot of great mobility, a lot of great skating, and a lot of great offensive traits. He's a player that I think has some decent upside, even though it's not amazing, probably not as big as a player like a Dimitri Simichev, in my opinion, but Tom Willander does bring a lot that I think Canucks will be looking for. Troy, thank you so much for subbing. So we'll see what happens there. I, I, I see Willander being the pick for the Canucks, though, at number 11. Next up at number 12, though, and I mean, I've you guys know, I've, I've done it time time again. I have the Coyotes picking Barlow, but something about it, something about it to me says that they will end up picking Gabriel Perot. Something about it just, something feels interesting to me. I mean, he's smaller than what the Coyotes have usually picked, but I feel like especially with players like Logan Cooley and the play drivers they have already, Gabriel Perot could be brilliant. And I, I feel like he's in a position where as a complimentary Arturi Lekkinen type player would be awesome in Arizona. And I feel like he has a lot of those traits, especially offensively, that Arizona doesn't have a lot of a ton of. And I think they'll really like that a lot. Paul, thank you so much for subscribing. But I think Barlow could absolutely still be the pick for sure. For sure. But boys, we got less than 10 minutes to go until the NHL draft is starting. If you guys are excited, get some W's. The draft is almost here, man. My favorite time of the year. And we're about to see what happens with all of these picks. Every single one of these. Buffalo, I'm going to this pick again. I, I feel like it will have to be a Russian. I think it will be Daniil Boot. Just a, fanta a, bit, a fantastic physical player with some really interesting offensive upside. He's a player that's big, but but plays a more smaller game, I would say. But he's a player that the clunkiness with skating will definitely need to be corrected a little bit. But I still think in the end, he's a player that I would like to have on Buffalo, especially as a complimentary prospect in that pool. Next, I'm at number 14 and the Penguins pick. I feel like it will be, uh, it will end up being Matthew Wood, honestly. Like this to me, I mean, grew, I'm pretty sure he grew up a Penguins fan. He's a player that I think fits a lot of the boxes for the Pens. And I could see him being the pick at number 14. Number 15 here, if the Preds don't end up moving up, and that's the big thing, if they don't end up moving up, I think this will end up being a pick that goes with Braden Yeager. To me, I think Yeager makes a lot of sense for the Preds up the middle. They need another center prospect there. And I think he could work a lot. We'll see what happens. Um, but I, I feel like Yeager fits a lot of the, a lot of the, the skill set check marks them that nashville wants i think up the middle he's gonna be a strong centerman there we'll see how much he's able to push that offensive potential but we'll see itchy thank you so much for subscribing 16th overall here we're gonna go over the calgary flames and this one again is all over the place for me i'm gonna say dimitri simashev though i just have a feeling simashev might be the pick and with the Flames, I, I think they might go for a D-man here, though Colby Barlow might make it interesting. I do know, uh, we, I've, we've seen it confirmed a lot as well, that Oliver Moore could be slipping in this draft. To me, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. But Simashev looks to have his draft stock rising over these last couple days, just with how many interviews he's been able to do. 
and I think that will I think that will help a lot for the Flames in them picking him 16th overall. And then at number 17, I think for the for the Red Wings, I mean they already picked a centerman, so they're kind of in a unique position here. But I think this is where Oliver Moore would uh, or Colby Barlow would end up going. Uh, to me, Barlow does I think make sense for Detroit, especially when you've already picked a centerman. I think Barlow could work pretty well. They could go for a defenseman here. Maybe they go for an actual Sandy Palik guy with this pick. That could be. A potential pick there too, but I think Barlow brings some size that Detroit might want to add in this draft. Uh, on top of Dvorsky, I think they do add a lot of that physicality. And I think with what we've seen with Yeisman recently, I feel like they might be going in a more physical direction, but we'll see. And number 18 here with the Winnipeg Jets, they're kind of all over the place. I, I have a feeling that they might go for a sneaky pick here, honestly. I mean, they, they've gone for, uh, of course, Brad Lambert and Rutger Morgordi in this last draft. They could go for a defenseman here. I think that's definitely a, a, a chance that that happens. But I'm, I'm going to say for them, they still go for a forward here. And I, I just have a feeling. I have a feeling here that Samuel Hanzig will end up being the pick for the Jets. Alvin, thank you so much for subscribing. Of course, from the WHL this last year, huge year with the Vancouver Giants. Uh, he's a player that I think for the Jets, and again, you, you have a lot of play drivers already in that prospect pool. I think Samuel Hanzig has just this good physical solid solid consistent player he's not a guy that's going to be blowing you away but he uses his size so well and he has pretty silky hands for his size too and I, I feel like for him he's a player that could shape up pretty well in that middle six maybe on that second line for the Jets perhaps but I think around that pick it would make sense and number 19 I think for the for the Blackhawks at this pick they just go for Oliver Moore they go for the best player available and I see Moore slipping a little bit in this draft but to me that playmaking silky game he has with one of the best skating pedigrees of this draft I think the Blackhawks really like that on top of having Connor Bedard too. And then, you know what? Let's go on to some of the last picks here. At number 20 with the Seattle Kraken. This one's, this one's, this one's interesting. I feel like they go for a forward. I feel like they go for a, a winger here, uh, at, at least with how it's it shaped up up to this point. I, I feel like for them, though, it will end up being Otto Stenberg. He's a player that I could see maybe slipping a little bit, but he had a great World Juniors for Sweden and really showed that playmaking and, and, and power offensive game he has, even though there's still a lot of muscle gain. I think for Seattle, they'll be fine taking on a project like that if they really wanted to. But wait, folks, we got a few more minutes to go until the NHL trade deadline. We are almost here. Let us know down below what you guys think is going to happen with all of these picks. We'll see what happens. But uh, it's going to be wild. <laughs> It's going to be wild, and I am so excited to see how all these picks end up. Let us know down below what are your hot takes for this draft, for this top five, for this top ten. I want to know down below, and we'll see what happens, folks. few more minutes to go. We could see some big trades as well again, some big moving ups. We saw Nashville and Montreal talking about a scare off. We'll see if that trade ends up getting done. We'll see, man. We'll see. And again, apparently Montreal and, and Nashville are talking about a scare off, so we'll see if it gets done. Vernon, what's going on? Oh, trade deadline. Yeah, draft. I'm sorry. My mind is on two billion planets right now. <laughs> Ken Hughes just said in an interview that the chance of keeping the picker over 50%. I mean, what is he supposed to say? <laughs> Lauren, thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to the Ground Gang. And also, folks, let me get the... Let me get the mod go and reset and everything so we can go through all the picks as we go through them as well. So hopefully... Hopefully we can keep it going, but uh, and, and we'll update it as we go as well. So we'll see all the picks and where they lie. I, I'm fortunately with this site, I'm not able to actually put in the logos if we do see trades and 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 change that at all. So I won't be able to do that, but I'll try my best to keep you guys updated for every single pick here. So we'll see how it goes. Also, let me get the picks up here so you guys can see them on the left. All right. Rock, thank you so much for subscribing. All right, y'all. Let me get the... Get it up here. All right. So ESPN will be updating every single pick as it goes, and we'll be refreshing to try to make the most of it. <laughs> I mean, this, this is going to be a wild top 10, folks. I'm just going to tell you right now. This will also hopefully have up, uh, it updated when there's actually trades. So that'll be big. But again, as we were talking about before, I feel like we're going to see a lot of movement within that top 10. Nothing is safe. Nothing is safe within that top 10 right now, besides really the Chicago pick. That, that's it. I mean, anything could happen. We saw even rumors of Michkov potentially being the Ducks pick at number two. So it's going to be wild. Wild. Yeah, 
Yep, we right now have one minute to go, y'all. Can we get some one minute hype in the chat down below? One minute hype. One minute hype. One minute hype. One minute hype. Let's go, baby. The draft is here. Oh, man, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's about to happen. It's about to be here. We've waited so long for this draft, man. We've waited too long, man. I mean, so for all the world juniors and everything and so many mock drafts on this channel and so many rankings and all, always just looking forward to this Badar draft. It's it, it's a special time, man. We are here and I appreciate each and every single one of you for being here with us tonight, spending your time with us, choosing us. We will not make you regret that. We got all the picks, all the trades updated right here on this stream for all you guys. So if you need any updates, we are right here for you. And if you need any draft content all throughout the year, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing because we got constant draft con content. And after this draft, we're gonna be focusing on the 2024 draft as well immediately. So the grind never stops. Luke, thank you so much for subscribing. Love to see it. All right, folks, the draft is here. Let's go, baby. Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> Are the Blackhawks gonna select Otto Stenberg first overall, guys? Oh, man. We'll see what happens. I mean, who, who knows? Otto Stenberg, maybe the pick first overall. Maybe the pick first overall, we'll see. Ideal Rangers pick. I think for them, I would go if a player like Oliver Moore were to drop that far. I don't see it, but that would be like my dream scenario if you're the Rangers. Um, just a, a, a pure upside center available, but I don't I don't see that happening. Shaggy, stuck at work, but I'm here for you, Grav. Shaggy, what's going on, King? Thank you so much. Love to see it. Shaggy, thank you so much for the two. Absolute OG on the channel, man. Love him. Can we get some love in the chat for Shaggy? The draft is here, y'all. Let us know again your predictions for the first round. And um, as of right now, we're going top five. We're going Bedard, Fantilli, Carlson, Smith, and Mishkov. We'll see if there's any changes there. We'll see if Montreal trades that fifth overall pick. It's going to be nuts. Michael with the five as well. If Benson drops past nine. I'm going to yell at the wings. Yeah, I don't really see it happening. I mean, Benson, I, I feel like he's going to get picked with either that Capitals or Red Wings pick for sure. Like, to me, it's between those two teams for Benson. And it's going to be a tough one because he is smaller, but I don't think that will hold him back at the next level. Think Logan Stankov in a lot of ways. Um, and I think that'll be that'll be a huge thing. Will Benson be picked in that top 10? Because I think he definitely should. You guys know I had him fifth in my rankings. He's a player that I think will overcome those size differences with the way he plays. But we'll see if teams think differently. I mean, players have dropped a lot because of their size, so we'll see if that happens again. Thoughts on the Penguins trade? I honestly liked it a lot for the Pens. I mean, using that cap space well, a third-round pick for Smith, I mean, you'll take that every day. Braden, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, Ice Jester says, Bedard, Fantilli, Carlson, Smith, Reinbacher fifth overall. J Jester says the Habs pick in Reinbacher. Okay. The Austrian stud. Grab Bruce Garrett reports Ottawa and Vancouver are talking. Ayo. Ayo. <laughs> yeah, so apparently from group Bruce Garrett, they're having a pre-draft chat. Pre-draft chat, perhaps. Now, we know the uh, Senators don't have their first-round pick this year, so maybe the Sens want to get back into the first round. Of course, the Canucks have their 11th overall pick. I don't know if the Canucks would, would trade that, but we'll see. I mean, that's the only pick they have inside the first two rounds for Vancouver is that 11th overall pick, and for Ottawa, they don't even have a pick in the first three rounds. So maybe Ottawa trying to make a splash tonight. We'll see. Keegan, what's going on? I think there's been uh, going to be major trades with Colorado. Could be. I mean, they have two first-round picks in this draft. They could they could give and go. They could acquire that and then trade them all away. They already traded that second-round pick they got in the in the deal for Ross Colton. So we'll see if they got more deals in place. Let us know down below, y'all. If you see any trade happening tonight, what is it? What trade will it end up being? If you can predict any trade to happen tonight, what will it be? I want to know, y'all. We got 2,000 people in the chat. Thank you guys so much for joining us for the 2023 NHL Drive Extravaganza. We got scouting reports, picks, details, rumors, and everything tonight. So you will not want to go anywhere. We'll see what happens. But uh, Jeff, feeling fantastic, man. We are ready for the NHL Draft. It is here, man. And I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Kreder, greetings from Australia. What's going on? Also, everybody in the chat, let us know down below where you're watching from. Coming to you from Garland, Texas. Great to have you tonight. 
Tim, just subscribe. This draft is one of the most uh, exciting days. Oh, 100%, Tim. I mean, today especially, with how many trades could be on the board here, There's you can't predict anything right now. Anything. <laughs> Should the Avs trade up or down with their two first round picks? I mean, if you're the Avs, I think you trade down, but you might even just trade that first, uh, that later first round pick. I mean, they have two later first round picks, so you could trade both of those maybe in a package. I mean, the Avs are a huge wild card for the second half of this draft, for sure. Whatever grab is on, I want some. I'm on that draft. I'm on that draft drug, okay? <laughs> Watching from Sweden, what's going on, David? With Getzlaff being the new player development director for the Ducks, does it solidify Fantilli? I mean, I think Fantilli will be the pick anyways, but I, I, that pick is all over the place already, so. BC boy, but in Ottawa, nice. Thoughts on the Flames this year? They're going to be mid. <laughs> They're not going to be anything, Braden. I mean... They've already, with the trades they've already made, I mean, I don't see them rebounding in any way. I like, and, and I feel like they're already kind of, they're already kind of knowing that it's not going to be, it's not going to be all too great. Where do you have Daniel Butte ranked? So as of right now, I have uh, Butte ranked 21st overall, but he's a player that I think could definitely be a top 15 player in this draft class if he's able to get over those skating woes, because that's really the biggest thing. If he's able to get past that skating, then I think Daniel Butte is a really fascinating project, a player that has that great skill and tight and uses his size in a huge way. And I think he has a great, he has a great brain for the game. And he's a player that I think, again, if he gets past those, that little bit of clunkiness in his skating and that acceleration, I think the sky's the limit for him. I mean, he has a great shot in the hockey since he has is fantastic. So we'll see. Jordan with a 279. Hope the Habs don't mess this up. We'll see if it's Mitchkov, man. We'll see if it's Mitchkov. We'll have to find out. Thank you, Jordan, for the dono. Appreciate it. Let me get you as the last donator now. Thank you, Ryan, as well, for subscribing. Boys, we got a few more minutes to go until the first pick is announced here. We're about to get going. Let us know down below how excited you guys are on a, on a scale from 1 to 10. We're about to begin, though, y'all, so do not go anywhere. Where we're going to be giving you all the updated picks as we go, and it's going to be wild. <laughs> it's going to be wild. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Perot goes to Buffalo. Perot would be an interesting pick. If they're not going to pick a Russian, and if Perot is available, then I could see it. Oh man, it's only just get this get this draft started already. I don't care. I don't care about what any of you guys say. I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about the people on the screen in the, in this camp. I do not care. Just get this. Do oh, can we get this going, please? I'm so antsy. I am so antsy right now. Because I think that's the thing, though, that makes this draft so interesting is that we have so many trades going coming into this draft that could happen. Because last year, if you guys remember, a ton of trades happened like hours before the draft. And it was a crazy draft day. But it wasn't a crazy draft and this year is an exception though there are so many rumors so many players swirling right now and potentially tons of trades to talk about so we'll see how many different picks we'll see in this in this first round but it's gonna be wild y'all strap up your seatbelt because it's gonna be nuts oh i'm so stressed daniel <laughs> i am so stressed right now but you know what? I, I have a feeling that again we'll see some big trades within that top ten. I think Mon I think as of right now, I think Montreal has a pretty good chance of trading it. We'll see if Iskarov is the guy they end up going for. But I mean, they've been in rumors a lot for goaltenders, which is made which made that new hook trade so interesting, considering they traded their late first rounder and their early second rounder that could have really given them a great opportunity at a fantastic goaltender. But they gave that away. Maybe if Jacob Fowler is available with that third, that's who they pick. But we'll see. All right, folks, let's go, baby. Here we go. Are you guys ready for the 2023 NHL draft? It's about to begin. And we're going to be going through all these picks, updating it as we go. We are here. Gary Bemmons now coming out. Let's go, baby. Finally, we can start this thing. Finally. Shaggy with a five again. I missed the breeze soundbite. If you all ain't subbed to the Grab Gang, what do you do with your lives? Do it now. True, 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 my man. This brother is spin. This brother is spin. <laughs> Thank you, Shaggy, for the dono. Appreciate you a lot. And as you guys know, the nations go a long way to support the channel. So everybody is appreciated. And you guys know I do this full time. So every donation is huge. And 
I just appreciate y'all so much. Appreciate y'all so much choosing us to be with, with to have y'all's trade. Uh, I was about to say trade deadline draft breakdowns we're gonna be here all throughout tonight giving you all the updates all the picks and scouting reports on every single prospect if you guys want to find out if this if your pick if your team makes the right decision you find out here you find out here when does the actual pick start I, it should be starting in a couple minutes time here should be starting very soon any blue jackets or vegas rumors nothing on either at least right now who do you think the Blues will pick? At 10th overall, I see Nate Danielson being the pick for them. I could see them going for a defense move their next one. They have a lot of options, though. They obviously still have all three of their first rounders in the in this... Uh, wait, do they? Yeah, yeah, they still have all their three first rounders in this first round. There was a lot of chatter over whether they'd trade one of those picks, but it doesn't seem like that's actually going to be the case for them. They still got 10th overall. They still got 25th overall, and they still got 29th overall. So the Blues could be in a huge position to upgrade their prospect pool. Best pick for the Pens. I think Gollum Moore, if he's available at that spot for four, at 14, would be amazing for them. He has such a high offensive ceiling. One of the best skaters in this draft. One of the best offensive play pushers in the draft. He just can make some odd decisions here or there, and that can kind of limit his offensive ceiling, but I think he's a player that in Pittsburgh could unlock that in a huge way. But let us know down below. All right, y'all? Official predictions. First overall, who's being selected? I, I, we have no idea. We have no idea. I kind of, you know, I kind of missed last year's draft where we had like no idea who was actually going to go first overall. <laughs> Patrick coming in with a five. Thoughts on Devils potentially getting hella buck. I mean, it would make them actually scary. Like they're scary now, but like, like widespread scary. Like for sure, Patrick. I mean, I would love to see it. I mean, the Devils would be, would be an unreal situation for hella buck. I would, I, I mean, especially for hella buck's sake, I think I, I would love to see him go. I would love to see him go to the Devils. That would be such a cool cool thing to see but let's get some patrick i'm in the chat thank you for the dono my man and for the first dono on the channel appreciate him man and i i mean pff, hello bucket hello bucket new jersey i i would love to see it i would love to see it all right y'all they are they're going through their stupid little speech and we're about to be getting underway here they're about are, are they giving a tribute to pecca rene i don't i don't really care i'm sorry we don't care. I like Pekka Rene, but we don't care. Can we start with the picks, please? My goodness. Max with the 14. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Max. And then weekly cover of the two. Where will Mitchkov end up? I'm thinking at the ferry buzzer, man. I think it's going to be Montreal. If they don't trade that pick. If they don't trade that pick, that's a th big thing. But as of right now, as of right now, I think it will be Montreal. I think it will be Montreal. We'll see, though. I'm going to be putting on the Habs jersey when their pick comes up, so. <laughs> you know what? We're going to do it right now. We're going to do it right now, all right? We're going to do it right now. We have to bless. We have to bless Mitch Cobb going to the Habs, all right? hey yeah hey yeah hey yeah The Montreal Canadiens. We'll now select Matt Michkov. Let's go, baby. Let's go. It's going to be Michkov fifth overall. We already know. We already know. And you know what? I got to give the... I got to put on the jersey for good luck for them. <laughs> we got to put on the jersey for good luck. All right, y'all. We're here. <laughs> we are here. Will it be Mitchkov? Let us know down below what your official predictions are for that fifth overall pick. Trade down, trade up, Mitchkov, Leonard, Reinbacher. What are our predictions? What are our predictions? Dalbert Dvorsky to the Canucks. I could see it. I could see it. I think if he's available, he will absolutely do that for sure. The Canucks will absolutely. Uh, I mean, I don't think he will be. I think it's between Dvorsky and Will Ender, but we'll see. Dado, thank you so much for subbing. Macamadoula goes first overall. True, Jeff. True. Who is this kind of Bedard scrub, anyways? Who's this kind of Bedard scrub, anyways? Chicago is finally on the clock. Holy! It's about time. It's about dang time, man. That's about dang time, man. Finally. Finally. We are starting with the 2023. NHL draft. The Blackhawks are on the board. Who will they pick? I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know. Will they pick Dalbert Dvorsky? Will they pick David Reinbacher? Kabane, thank you so much for subbing. I mean, Les, thank you so much for subscribing. I don't know, man. I, I feel like this Blackhawks pick is just, uh, who do they even pick? Who do they even pick? I'm not even, I, I, I have no clue. <laughs> Alex, thank you so much for subbing as well. I don't know why the Blackhawks haven't just immediately made this selection. What are they doing? <laughs> can we can we get through this, please? This isn't a hard decision. Just make it happen. We're we're begging. Come on. Come on. I wonder if but I wonder if Connor is nervous. <laughs> I wonder if he I wonder if he's nervous at all. Like, is he thinking it might not it might not actually happen? I don't know. <laughs> all right y'all the pick is in finally the blackhawks will be selecting first overall and they have made their pick i want i wonder i'm gonna be shocked i'm gonna be shocked if it's Connor bedard guys i'm gonna be shocked this is crazy this is crazy guys i don't even know i don't even know what to expect <sighs> actually you know what first overall pick i'm thinking i'm thinking terrell tugboat i'm thinking so i'm, I'm thinking um I'm thinking Bruce Wayne or something like that. Uh, there's a couple of good prospects. I just don't know if they go first overall, but maybe Chicago, maybe Chicago does it. Maybe they do, maybe they do it. Zach, thank you so much for subbing. The Blackhawks are up on the podium. I wonder who they will end up select selecting here. Um, <laughs> they're taking it. They're going to take so long for this too. They're going to take like 30, 30 minutes to announce this pick. <laughs> What do you think about Philadelphia? I think they go Ryan Leonard if he's available. That's what's that's what we've seen the, a lot of the rumors surrounding it. It looks like Ryan Leonard will end up being the pick if he's if he's on the board there. If he's on the board. But I, I feel like it could kind of go all over the place. Maybe we see them pick a player like Zach Benson if he's available too. We'll see. But it'll, I think it'll be between Leonard and Benson, honestly. Leonard would be perfect in Philadelphia. I would love to see it. What are your predictions for the Red Wings? Uh, earlier, I had them, uh, I, I had them all over the place. I mean, I, I, I could see them picking a, 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 just like ten different guys, honestly. But oh, there it is! Selection is about to be made, and with the first overall pick in the 2023 NHL Draft, he's taking a long time to announce this. It will be Connor Bedard, first overall. There you go, folks. There you go. First overall, Connor Bedard, and that is the most shocking thing you will see tonight, for sure. Definitely not hyperbole. Definitely not hyperbole. <laughs> Definitely not. I'm, I'm telling you right now. But Connor Bedard is first overall, and that will not surprise anybody that has ever watched him in their entire lives. One of the best prospects we will see over this next decade. The next era of hockey is coming to Chicago. Connor Bedard is electric, unreal. He is in every single way a franchise player that you want. A hard worker, an unbelievably skill, uh, an unbelievable skill set in every way. The shot he possesses, the way he's able to be, uh, play in transition, the speed at which he plays the game. Everything is at such a high level that hockey sense is one of the best we've ever seen in the draft. He always knows where to be, always knows how to create. And for Chicago, from day one, he's going to be their franchise face. He's going to be their franchise face and is going to be given first line minutes, going to be doing everything. And I, I think he's going to be unreal. But we'll see what happens. This, I mean, Chicago now has the obvious pick out of the way. Now we can finally get into all the craziness because everything outside of this, everything outside of this is where it really gets crazy. Let us know down below, though. Now, next up, we have the second overall pick in the Anaheim Ducks. Who will it end up being? Will it be Fantilli? Will it be Michkov? Will it be Carlson? It doesn't look like there's any chance Will Smith will be the guy for Anaheim. But I'm, I'm still saying Fantilli. But again, this is where it gets interesting. Because Anaheim, we've seen so many rumors for them. So many. I mean, we've seen Fantilli obviously be the favorite. But we've seen Leo Carlson even. In, in, apparently, he, uh, Leo Carlson was the betting favorite earlier today. But we'll see. Matthew Michkov still is on the board, of course, too. So we'll see what happens. Already 98. Connor Bedard on the back of his jersey. Chicago was ready to make this pick and 
First overall will be Connor Bedard. That's not a surprise. We'll see though, man. We'll see. The Ducks pick is going to be fascinating here after this too. Mishkov, I think will not. I, I, he's had a lot of, of of stock risen over these last couple of years, just uh, last couple of days, just because of the interviews he's been doing, and apparently they've been doing pretty well. So we'll see if he gets that uh, if that rises up Mishkov's stock here in the end. I think it will. I think it will. Let us know though what you guys think for the rest of the top five. I think Fantilli's going to be in the next pick here. If he's not, then this becomes a wild draft. But again, there is tons of different trades we can see all throughout this first round. So do not go anywhere. Honestly, though. I, I feel like I feel like with the Ducks, I mean, we've heard the Mage Cop rumors, too, man. I mean, there's we honestly I have no idea who they who the Ducks end up taking because it should be Fantilli. To me, it should be Fantilli and you run away with that pick. Loving it. Wolf, thank you so much for subbing. I mean, the Ducks take another center. They need wingers to play with Zebras and McTavish. I mean, I, I feel like I, I feel like the, I don't really know. I feel like you could have Zegris on the wing and be fine with it. I, I, I feel like Zegris could be fine on that on the wing. McTavish will likely be a center, but I could see them putting Zegris on the wing and then having him alongside Van Tilly. I mean, that would be insane. Yeah, I did see that water bug. Latest athletic article did have uh, Carlson being the pick for the Ducks, which we'll see if that actually is the case. The Ducks, we've heard a lot of rumors of them loving Carlson in the past. So we'll see what ends up happening. The Ducks, though, this is the wild. This could be the start of the wild picks because after Bedard, we have no clue. We have no clue. But to me, Fantilli should be the pick here for Anaheim. The way he's able to the power through his game, the physical play he has, the skating, the electricity he's able to create. He's such a gifted offensive player and such a gifted transitional player too. And I think he's a player that in Anaheim will flourish. Flourish along the boards, flourish around everybody. And alongside a player, I mean, if they're going to put Zegras on the wing, if they have Zegras with Fantilli, that's going to be unreal. But now the Anaheim Ducks are officially on the clock, y'all. And we will now see who they end up selecting. They got a big choice to make after Bernard. And here is where things get interesting. We'll see. We'll see. Kenji with the 279. I put everything on the Blackhawks par uh, picking Barlow. Thank you, brother. Appreciate the dono. And also John with the two. Mock trade. Detroit gets uh, to bring it for ninth and Zadina. I mean, that would be pretty wild. <laughs> Imagine Zadina being traded to Ottawa would be really funny after all this time. Thank you, John, for the dono. I mean, again, it seems like all the rumors are pointing towards Dabrinka going to Detroit. So we'll see if that's actually the case here. Yeah, man. GG's to Blackhawks fans, man. Bedard is a franchise changer. A franchise changer. And he's going to be unreal with the Blackhawks. As, and as a Stars fan, I'm literally weeping in my boots ever since the lottery was announced because... Uh, it does suck. <laughs> it does suck that Cutter Bernard will be in my division. It really does. Kenji, my wife took the kids in the bank and took my house. Kenji, I appreciate you still donating even though you've gone through all of that. <laughs> I appreciate it. The pick is in, y'all. The pick is in for the Anaheim Ducks. All right, let's go, baby. Let's go. The pick is in for the Anaheim Ducks. Let me see if ESPN has updated the order yet. They'll do it in a second. I know, I know they will. Um, let me try to find something here as we go through maybe there's a place that's more up to date but man connor but are going first overall no no surprises there no surprises there it will be connor Bedard with that first overall pick honestly i i feel like it'll be fantilly though it has to be fantilly it has to be fantilly there's just no way it's not there is no way it's not man Oh, does Cap Friendly have it more updated? Let me see. All right, let me put up Cap Friendly then. That's a good idea. That is a good idea right there. All right, so Cap Friendly's got the immediate picks being made as they get done. Uh, I guess uh, ESPN wasn't fully up to date immediately. There we go. So now we got first overall pick in Connor Bedard. He is your selection first overall, and now we have the rest. <laughs> we have the rest of it here. Second overall is next. Let us know your official predictions down below. I'm thinking Fantilli is going to be the pick here, but we'll see what happens. 
It could be Carlson. It could be Michkov. Anybody could be going to Anaheim. Pat Verbeek, we've heard a lot about him being wild and wacky. We'll see what ends up being. But the pick is in here for the Ducks. It's got to be Fantilli, man. It's got to be Fantilli. There's no way the Ducks pass up on a talent like that, man. A complete talent like that. Like, to me, it just, it would make no sense for them, even though I do like Leo Carlson. I do like Matthew Michkov. Fantilli is the real deal, man, in every single way. And he needs to be the pick here for the Ducks. He really does. This is the thing. He needs to be the pu uh, he needs to be the pick here for the Ducks. Will it actually be the pick at number two? Let's see. All right, second overall, the Anaheim Ducks. Leo Carlson, holy! Oh my goodness! They actually did it! They actually did it! Leo Carlson is the pick by the Anaheim Ducks. Oh my goodness. Yo, I told you this draft was going to be crazy. What is going on? What is going on? Leo Carlson, second overall. He is your pick by Anaheim. Holy. Yo, what is going on? What is going on? Carlson is your pick by the Ducks. And in a lot of ways, Carlson is still an exceptional player. Brings some great physical traits. One of the best playmakers of this draft. High end in that puck handling and offensive awareness. He's a player that can find any teammate from anywhere on the ice. And he has great physical talents as well, even though I think he de should definitely use that more. Once he uses that physical play even more, especially in the corner boards, he can be a dominant physical playmaking centerman. And I think for the Ducks, this is a fascinating choice, considering, of course, they have Zegras. I thought they were going to go for a more two-way player here. The biggest weakness to me with Leo Carlson is that offensive speed as well as that shooting. And this is something that for Anaheim, they're going to have to work around. Are they okay with having that premier playmaker? It looks like they are. It looks like they are. Leo Carlson <laughs> is the pick. Wow. This is insane, man. Leo Carlson. Leo Carlson. And now third overall, the Columbus Blue Jackets are next up, bro. And Fantilli, and Fantilli falling to number three is wild. The Blue Jackets just got the biggest Christmas present of all time. Jordan of the 279, all bets are off now. You are so true, my man. Already this 2023 draft is off the rails. Already. Already. Let us know down below what you guys think of the Carlson pick. Is it a W or an L? Is it a W or an L? Wow. Is it a W or an L? Let us know down below. This is nutty. <laughs> this is nutty. Leo Carlson. Holy. Holy. Columbus. Get some Ws for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Holy. Holy. CBJ. CBJ. <laughs> wow columbus man congratulations congratulations but here's the thing though we've heard a lot about how the blue jackets have loved will smith even potentially more than leo carlson so is fantilly even a lock here it would be like i i know i'm 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 i don't know how, i don't know how i'm even saying this right now that fantilly's a lock but look what's happening right now look at what's happening anaheim passes up on him that is crazy man that is crazy could he i mean i don't there's no way there is no way columbus doesn't pick him right right <sighs> this is wild this is wild man do they pick will smith do they pick will smith now it's crazy columbus is on the clock and let's see what they do here we got 2700 people in the chat right now we're about to see something wild here we've already seen something wild leo carlson second overall Crazy man, shall you the suit fan till you get a fall to Detroit somehow? <laughs> Eiserman just bribed the entire NHL to make Fantilli drop. Imagine the Montreal Canadiens don't even need to trade up and they still get uh, Adam Fantilli. <laughs> Daily, thank you so much for subscribing. And y'all, if you guys are enjoying the excitement, hit that subscribe button. Join us for all the draft content, all of the picks here, because we're going to be giving you every single update as we go. But Leo Carlson, man, crazy, crazy. 
Wow, man. If if Colum Columbus, if you pass up on Fantilli, I'm going to freak. I'm going to freak, okay? I am going to freak out. <laughs> John with the two. To be honest, Leo isn't a surprise. Anaheim needed an elite passer. I could see that. I mean, to me, I think, especially alongside McTavish, that's the thing, though. Like, I, I we were talking about the centers that Anaheim could transition to wing. I feel like Zegris makes a lot more sense there. And I like Zegris with Fantilli a lot more than I like Zegris with Carlson. Unless they're gonna have Carlson maybe like the maybe like the first line center, and then they have maybe Zegris with McTavish. Maybe if they put Zegris on the wing and the McTavish center, and then Carlson is a first line center. I'm not sure. I don't know. The pick is in though for the Columbus Blue Jackets. They will be coming up here now. Will it be Smith? Will it be Fantilli? We'll have to find out here. This is wild. I bet Columbus was just like getting so many phone calls right then. <laughs> so many phone calls. Thank you, John, once again. CBJ better do it, man. The fact that Columbus has Adam Fantilli on their on their laps, man, they've been given a golden opportunity. If they don't pick Fantilli, I'm going to freak, man. I mean, I would like it because I would love Fantilli in San Jose. That would be sick, but we'll see. Let's see, though, who will be the pick. We saw, of course, Columbus favoring Will Smith over Leo Carlson earlier today. We'll see if they favor Will Smith over Adam Fantilli. It's getting wild. It is getting wild tonight, folks. But Yarmo Kekalainen is on the stage now. We will be getting the pick announced really soon, folks. 2,800 in this chat. Will Fantilli continue to fall? Oh, man. I mean, San Jose could be in for literally the gift of a lifetime. I swear. Looks like John Davidson is out to announce it here. Will it be Fantilli? Will it be Fantilli? Oh boy. I'm nervous, man. I'm nervous right now. Will it be Will Smith? Will it be Fantilli? Oh, dude. I'm so, I'm so nervous, man. I am so nervous. All right, third overall. Who will the pick end up being for the Columbus Blue Jackets? Oh boy. It has to be Fantilli. It has to be. There's there's no way it's not Fantilli. I mean, you were just given the best opportunity of a lifetime. You need to take Fantilli here. Yarmo Kekalainen announcing it. Third overall. Fantilli is the pick. Columbus, congratulations, man. Congratulations. What a pick. And that is an absolute steal to get Adam Fantilli third overall. We were saying all throughout my rankings this year, in my opinion, Adam Fantilli would be the second best second overall or the, the best second overall pick since Jack Eichel. And now he went third overall. But there's a reason for that. Six foot two, 187 pounds, uses his physical size perfectly. In so many categories, along the wall, in, the, in his edge work, in so many ways, he is a built player and a pro player. He's a player that I could see playing for Columbus next year and being an impact player on day one. But his skating is solid. The consistency and the, the hockey sense he has is fantastic. And that high-end passing game is great, alongside a shot that has been getting better and better every single year and has exploded this season. For Columbus, this is a franchise-changing pick in every way. A franchise-changing pick. And now Columbus looks so much better in every way. What a W for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And this becomes one of the best third overall picks I think any team has ever made. It's unbelievable that Columbus gets a talent like this with that third overall pick. But now let us know down below, fourth overall of the Sharks, what will it end up being? Now that we've seen Fantilli not dropping anymore, we'll see if there's any more surprises, but Columbus will get Fantilli and he is going to be a beast there, man. And a beast. <laughs> oh man, what a pick. I am so happy for Blue Jackets fans, man. They lost the lottery. They lost the lottery. They had the, the, the best, or they had such a good chance for Connor Bedard. But now at third overall, they are the team to get Fantilli in the end. Unreal. Unreal. Just, just an absolute steal. And there's no other way to put it. It's just not even close. <laughs> I see Mitch Cobb falling hard. We'll see, man. I mean, there's been a lot of uh, talk about him still being a top 10 pick, maybe even being the Habs pick at fifth overall. Now it gets a little bit less weird because we expected still Carlson and Fantilli to be the picks at number two and number three. Now it's in a much different order, but we'll see. 
Blue Jackets, though, what a dub, man. Just congratulations. Congratulations to the Blue Jackets. That is a brilliant pick and will serve them up so well for the future. We got 3,000 people in the chat. Thank you guys so much for coming in. If you're enjoying the excitement, hit that like button. We are 99 likes away from 100. Guys, if you're enjoying, hit that like button. Every single bit helps the stream, and we'd love to see you guys come by. Thoughts on Nick Lardis? I'm not too high on him. I love his shot ceiling. He's a player that is such a good goal scorer, but I'm not sure if the physical traits will translate to the NHL, in my opinion. But I think it's like a late second round or third rounder. I could see it. Sam, thank you so much for subscribing. I, no, I don't think you smell, man. You smell great. Hunter, thank you for subscribing as well. People are overreacting about Carlson at two. It wouldn't have been my pick, but I mean, Carlson is a gifted player, fantastic playmaker, and he's the type of guy that can be that elite playmaker, one of the best in the NHL. Um, it wouldn't have been my pick. I would have gone Fantilli every single day of the week, but uh, Fantilli does bring a lot that I think Anaheim will still love. He's going to be a first-line center. Like, as much as I, I like Fantilli a lot more, both players are first-line centers for the future, for whoever t picks them. Columbus, I just think, gets a lot better of a ceiling overall, especially especially in the goal-scoring department. Like, Fantilli's a great playmaker, but the shot, I mean, is worlds better than Carlson. It's not just the shot, but it's the way he puts himself in shooting positions. We'll see for the Ducks if it ends up being the right decision, but Columbus ends up getting Fantilli, which is wild. Thoughts on Duclair for Hannafin, one for one. One for one, I don't see that happening. That would be a wild win for the Panthers, in my opinion. Now the Sharks are on the clock. We'll see what goes on here. It will be Will Smith, in my opinion, though. I'm going to predict Smil Smith is the pick here. Let us know down below. What do you guys think for the San Jose Sharks? Who will end up being the pick in fourth overall? We'll have to find out. We'll have to find out. Grab who's a good face-off guy and special teams guy who will be available at 21. Um, I, I don't put a lot of stock into face-offs and special teams right now. Um... Or at least, at least at this age, at Mike. But, I mean, Colby Barlow is a spectacular penalty killer. I know that for sure. Dragon, thank you so much for the two. Let's go, Red Wings. I hope Stevie Y picks someone great. Let's go. Tim, I mean, it's Steve Eisman. So, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Donald, thank you so much for uh, for subscribing. But, Tim, love you. Can we get some hype in the chat for him? Yeah, I mean, it's Steve Eisman. No doubt. No doubt it will be somebody good. All right, man. I'm, I'm, I, uh, man, that Leo Carlson pick just threw me in th for a circus. But now we got fourth overall here. And again, there could be a lot that could change. A lot could change here. We've heard a lot of rumors about, about Will Smith likely being the pick for the Sharks here. They likely would be going for one of the centers available. Will Smith, I would say, is like 90% chance at being the pick. It doesn't look like the Sharks are favoring Michkov at all, considering they want to go for it a little bit more than most people realize. They're a team that. I think we'll not want to wait for Michkov. It's one of those teams that is a little bit more hesitant to do that. But the pick is in here for the Sharks, and we'll see them go up to the podium here. This is going to be nuts, y'all. I, I have a very strong feeling it'll be Smith, but I don't know, man. The Sharks are kind of wild. The Sharks are kind of wild. I think Smith is going to be fascinating, though, on the Sharks. He He's a player that I think would fit their, their style pretty solidly. He isn't the biggest player, which is a little bit different than what San Jose has gone for, the, at least under my career. But I think it might be. I think it's got to be Will Smith still. I think it's got to be Will Smith. Oko, thank you so much for subscribing. Will Smith will be a third blind player on the Sharks Max. Are you just saying that because of the Shark system or do you not like Will Smith? But the pick is in here and the Sharks are about to announce it. Let us know again down below what you guys are thinking. I think it'll, ha it'll have to be Will Smith here. We are close to the Habs pick, y'all. We are close to the Habs pick. We'll see. Will Mavi Michkov still on the board? Be on the board? Will they? Will the Sharks select Michkov somehow? And then will, will Smith be available? We'll find out tonight, y'all. We will find out tonight. Quinn, what's going on? Mike Greer is up to announce it, and we'll see who he selects. Big pick here, and a huge selection for the future of this franchise. We'll see who the Sharks end up getting. Uh, what if the Sharks end up getting it done? Holland, thank you for summon. What is your jersey? This is my P.K. Subban Habs jersey. Thoughts on the Flyers having to play at 11 p.m. on a 16 game day. On the 16 game day? That's rough. That's rough. Andrew, what's going on? Let's see. Who will be the fourth overall selection by the San Jose Sharks? Oh. Oh, they got... Uh, is, this, is this Marlowe to announce it? There you go! There you go! Will Smith is your pick. Fourth overall. 
the San Jose Sharks end up selecting him. Will Smith is a great pick here, and I think fits the Sharks and their needs a lot. They needed a top-end, skillful center. I think Will Smith really does fit that mold. He's a player that I think is interesting in the San Jose system. Again, they've usually gone for bigger players. I don't think Will Smith plays a particularly big game, but he's a player that I think just is a really interesting, a really interesting future face for the Sharks, I, I would say, because he brings a lot that I think in, in the Shark system will... I don't know if it'll be valued correctly. We'll see. Because he's a player that isn't the greatest skater, isn't the greatest accelerator, and I think that might hold him back a little bit from being a, a purely elite player at the next level, which is why I had players like Mavi Michkov and Zach Benson ahead of them in my personal rankings. But Smith is interesting. I mean, the passing ability that he has, the vision that he has on the ice, the puck handling, the skill set is unbelievable. Definitely one of the most talented and, in my opinion, besides Bedard, probably the most creative player in this draft. He can do things that you just can't expect and won't expect until he does it. And he's the type of player that I think can really be a trendsetter at the next level. Is it going to be a solid transition player? Is a great 5-on-5 five -five guy? Will be solid in the power play? And again, that playmaking game, that solid shooting ability. He's a player that I think could become a first-line center for the Sharks. There might be some hiccups along the way and it might take a little bit of time for him to get to that level but i do think for the sharks this is a worthy pick to make will smith is such a dynamic player and we'll see if he's able to translate that to the next level but considering the sharks in their franchise position right now they needed a player that had a big ceiling had a big potential will smith is that guy and i, I think for the sharks it's a worthy pick to make we'll see if it actually if it actually churns out especially considering some other players that were left on the board but we'll see here now we go on to the fifth overall pick y'all we'll see what happens we'll see what happens do we see a trade what do we see tonight y'all will the Habs actually make a trade here will the Habs actually make a trade oh man oh man i'm i'm antsy we got the montreal canadians pick coming up y'all let us know down below what are your predictions for fifth overall what are your predictions i want to know down below I gotta uh, get my blinds so they aren't uh, going crazy all over me. Ugh. So brutal. Okay, now we are here. Mishkov is on the board, y'all. Mishkov is on the board. And this is the thing. Do the Habs actually pick him? Do the Habs actually pick him? It'll all come down to this. It's all gonna come down to this and we'll see. We'll see. Will they trade the pick? David Pagnotis says, not much activity at the Habs trade table right now. Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon sitting nicely and calmly. Let's see what they do here at number five. Looks like the Habs won't be trading the pick, y'all, at least right now. That might change. That could change. But looks like the Habs won't be trading the pick. You know, man, it all came, it came, comes down to this. And I think at the very end, it might end up being Mechkov. I mean, just what we've heard today and, and how well that interview with the Habs went with Mechkov, I feel like I feel like it's going to be him. I feel like it's going to be him. But this is a big decision to make. We've seen so many rumors surrounding this Habs pick all throughout this draft season. Would it be Dvorsky? Would it be Ryan Bacher? Would it be a player like Ryan Leonard? Would it be a player like Will Smith? Would it be a player like a Matthew Mishkov? So many rumors, and it's just been nonstop. But in a few minutes' time, we will know the answer. We will know the answer, and it's going to be nuts. And I'm so excited to finally know the answer. <laughs> I want Mechkov, but I'm ready for Leonard. Honestly, yeah, for all Habs fans in this chat, be ready for anything right now because we have no idea what's about to go down. <laughs> no idea what's about to go down. It's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. Samantha, thank you so much for subscribing. Oh, boy. The pick is in. The pick is in. Okay. Looks like the Habs will be making this pick here. They won't be training the pick. They will be keeping up a fifth overall. It's Come on, Mechkov. It's got to be Mechkov, man. Let's go, Mechkov. Can we get some Mechkov love in the hype? In the, love in the hype? <laughs> love in the chat. Let's go. Let's go, man. We'll see. I'm Team Mechkov right now. I'm Team Mechkov. But we'll find out soon. Who will the Habs pick end up being? Right now, we are five likes away from 500. Y'all hit that like button if you guys are enjoying the excitement. The Habs pick is in. Come on, baby. Oh, boy. And as I've talked about before, I don't think Ryan Leonard would be a horrible pick by the Habs, but to me, I think Michkov is definitely the highest ceiling pick for them and should be the guy. We'll see if it actually ends up being it. But the pick is in, man. The pick is in. Habs are keeping this pick. Come on. Come on, baby. I just need it right now. I need it right now. Please. Oh, man. I need it so bad. I need it more than air. Finally, in the next few minutes, we are going to know who the Habs will be picking in this draft. It's 
about dang time man it's about dang time let us know your predictions down below in the chat i'm going michkov i think it'll be michkov we'll see we'll see man oh this is about to shake up so much this is about to shake up so much do you know what's going on Carrie Price is coming up to the podium. Looks like he'll be announcing the pick. Kyle, thank you so much for subscribing. Let us know again your predictions down below. I'm hoping for Michkov, and I think it will be Michkov here, but we are about to find out. We are about to find out. I am so nervous. <laughs> I am so nervous right now. I can't even lie. I can't even lie. Oh, boy. Okay, man. Here we go. The Montreal Canadiens. Kent Hughes is on the podium. This is the moment we have been waiting for. Who will the Montreal Canadiens select in the 2023 NHL Draft? We are about to find out. Oh, man. Oh, man. Here we go. I'm so nervous, man. I'm so nervous. Come on. It's got to be Michkov. It's got to be Michkov. Oh, is he handing it out to Carey Price? He is. Carey Price will be announcing... He went fifth overall. He went fifth overall, and he'll be announcing the Habs next fifth overall. Carey Price will announce that the Montreal Canadiens will draft in the 2023 NHL Draft. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, come on. Oh boy, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. <laughs> only, it's only game. All you got to do oh. Oh my gosh, they picked Ryan. What? It's only game. Ryan Bucker? <laughs> Bro! Bro! <laughs> what? They picked David Ryan Bucker? After all this time? After all this time? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, what is going on in Montreal? Bro, Ken Hughes just sold. Ken Hughes just sold. Oh man, oh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Bro, Montreal is always hilarious. Bro, oh, that is hilarious, man. That is hilarious. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe it! I can't believe it! <laughs> I'm gonna lose my voice! I'm gonna lose my voice! Holy crap! Okay, let's let's talk about David Reinbacher for a second here, alright? Let's talk about David Reinbacher for a second. David Reinbacher is gonna be a solid middle pairing, probably third, maybe second defenseman of the next level. Solid skating, great positional awareness, strong defensively, and a really great physical game that's already been rounded out well. He has great size, six foot two, 187 pounds. He's gonna be a good defenseman. He's gonna be a good solid two-way physical defenseman. He's gonna be a middle pairing guy. But man, if that doesn't scream a buy low pick right there, I don't know what does. I don't know what does. That is... A wild pick for the Montreal Canadiens to make, man. Actually insane. Actually, actually di definitively insane. Man. <laughs> Dude! Is, am I watching a fake... I'm, am I watching a fake stream right now? Is this real? Am I, am I dreaming right now? Is, I mean, it's pretty hot in here. I, am, am I dreaming, actually? Nicholas, thank you so much for subscribing. My voice is more, has cracked more in the last two minutes than in my entire life before this. Oh. <laughs> Bro! Why? I, uh, Reinbacher's gonna be solid, man, but that is... That is just... That is just a disappointing pick fifth overall, man. A disappointing pick. To me, Dmitry Simashev is the best defenseman of this draft, and you could have gotten a lot of a lot of really great characteristics in Reinbacher in 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 a player like Simashev and probably got him a lot lower too. Like around where the Habs were gonna pick, around that 15th overall pick. We saw there was rumors out there, reports that that Predators offered 15, 24, and a scare off for that fifth overall pick. 
and the has picked Ryan Bucker. Ryan Buck. I could get it if it was Michka. I could get it. I could get it. I could get it if it was Michka. Everyone said this about Cider. Cider. Ryan Bucker is not Cider. <laughs> Ryan Walker has similar tools, but he definitely was... I don't think he's up to that level. At least in terms of pure potential. Um, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. <laughs> I can't believe it. Montreal, you are a funny team. You are a funny team, man. Wow. Wow. Let us know in the chat down below. W or L, that Montreal Canadiens pick. <laughs> Where do you guys see Mitch Scott going next? Now Reinbacher is off the board for the Oats, and that kind of throws off my entire predictions for the Coyotes because I had them selecting Reinbacher sixth overall almost all of my mock drafts. And now with Reinbacher out, I don't know. Who do the Coyotes pick? I don't I don't see them picking Mitch Cobb. I really don't. Is it, I, I feel like it's got to be Ryan Leonard. I feel like it might be Ryan Leonard then. I don't know. This is weird, man. This is This is weird. I feel like it's gotta be a Ryan Leonard or no, I don't see them picking Zach Benson. I feel like it's gonna be Ryan Leonard. This is this Valen, thank you so much for subscribing. This changes the entire draft, man. I have no idea who the Coyotes are about to pick. No idea. <laughs> no idea. This is about to go crazy, man. This is about to go crazy. I mean, so far I'm two for six or two for five. This is brutal. Maybe Simashev? I don't know. I, don't, I feel like they could get Simashev at their at their 12th pick. That's a thing. If they really want to go after Simashev. Now, the Coyotes... Dude, this is wild. This is wild. I I just have no... I have no faith, though, that the Coyotes are going to pick a Meechkov or a Benson. They just have not drafted smaller players at all. And besides Logan Cooley, who is like a must-have, they haven't drafted anybody like that. I, I feel like it's got to be... This is crazy. This is crazy. I, I have no idea what's about to happen with the rest of this draft. I am flustered. I am panicked, bro. This is insane. Like, Meech got still available. And 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 there's not a it's not like a crazy amount of oh, like, oh, oh, this guy, this guy, this guy's still available. But this order at which we've seen this, man. Carlson going second. Reinbacher fifth overall. This is insane. Where's Matthew Wood going? I think Pittsburgh 14th makes a lot of sense. <laughs> thank you weekly for the two again i appreciate you big man oh this is crazy i am i am on cloud nine right now i am on like i don't even i don't even know what to say i can't even i don't even know what's going i don't even know what's what's going on i can't even lie with you guys oh bro where do you think Crystal's going? I think late first, if he's going to go anywhere. I could see a team like Vegas maybe picking him. But the Coyotes are about to make the selection here. We will see who they pick six overall. I, I think my prediction, you know what? Let's just go Barlow at the end. <laughs> no, it's not going to be that. This is going to be weird. Who do they pick, man? You know, it's going to be it's gonna be somebody crazy like Matthew Wood. It's going to be somebody crazy like Matthew Wood, isn't it? <laughs> the Coyotes, I don't even know what, what, to, what, to, even, what to even predict here. I'm not even going to try. I'm going to say Matthew Wood because it would be really funny. I'm going to say he's really... I'm going to think he's really funny. But, you know, I think Ryan Leonard would also make a lot of sense. I think it might. That is probably the more realistic one, too. The Coyotes end up selecting... Oh, Simashev! Whoa! Okay! Okay! The Coyotes select Dimitri Simashev. Hey, bro. You know what? Like, if you're going to reach for a D-man, Simashev, I like it. I like it. Arizona... Puts up another splash. Dmitry Simashev is the pick at number six. But to me, Dmitry Simashev is the best defenseman of this draft. The skating characteristics he has are impeccable. One of the best skaters of this draft. Not even just for defensemen, just in general. He is unbelievable in that department. The physical play he has is amazing too. Six foot four, 201 pounds. This is a player that has massive potential though and if he unlocks more of that offensive game that has been getting better over the last year then to me this is a player that could be a top two defenseman for you maybe even a number one that skating pedigree is unbelievable but he's a player that is a big risk for sure is a big risk but at the same time 
a number six i mean if with ryan Bacher gone why the heck not man if you're gonna go for a d and, and i think for arizona this has been like worst case scenario for them because i think they were definitely gonna go for ryan Bacher in the end but they go for dimitri Simashev here this is crazy y'all this is crazy what is going on with this nhl draft what is going on with this nhl draft oh my goodness we got right now 2700 in the chat thank you guys so much for coming in we now have some crazy ones coming up because right now we have the Fl the flyers pick the capitals pick the red wings pick and the blues if i'm a red wings fan right now man i am i am dancing all right this is looking amazing for the red wings this is looking amazing for the flyers this is looking good look at the rest of this top 10 we could see a team trade up again nashville we heard rumors of them trading up in the top 10 they haven't done that yet we'll see if they can get that done oh man ryan leonard i, I feel like it's gotta be ryan leonard though at number seven like there's no way the flyers pass up on ryan leonard especially the 2d gone there's no chance there's no chance leonard overrated i i don't know i he was he was in the uh, pretty much the exact position i had ranked second uh, seventh overall so him going to the flyers wouldn't surprise me wouldn't be a bad pick either let us know though what do you guys predict for the rest of the top 10 we got the flyers capitals red wings and blues but right now i'm gonna say leonard goes to the flyers michkov is gonna go man michkov is a capital isn't he <laughs> michkov is a capital isn't he folks folks it's happening it's happening so Mishkov will go to the Caps, Ryan Leonard to the to the Flyers. I think for the Red Wings, it's kind of all, all up in the air, honestly. Like I don't even I don't even know who they pick. I, I I can't even I can't even decide. Hunter, thank you so much for subscribing. I, I I'm gonna say for number nine for the Red Wings, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Matthew Wood. I think he goes pretty high in this draft. I just have a feeling something something is telling me. We also heard rumors as well of Wood going pretty high, so we'll see. The Flyers are on the clock now here, though, with the seventh overall pick. We'll see what happens, y'all. Oh. Dark Fox, thank you so much for subscribing. Y'all, this draft, this friggin' draft, what is going on, man? This is what we live for, man. If the draft was so, uh, it was so easy to predict, then why, why are we watching? You know, like this is, this is why we're here, man. Just the craziness that is happening right now is insanity. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> this is nuts. This is nuts. I can't believe what's going on. Uh, I'm, I'm freaking out, man, because now, like, everything about this draft has changed. Um, man, unbelievable i can't even believe what i'm seeing man the fact that we see ryan Bacher and and simishev go back to back to back i again though that's the thing i think if there's if there's one pick that is more likely to be solid i think it's the i think it's the simishev pick with the coyotes at sixth overall i don't like ryan Bacher at all fifth at all he was always gonna go in the top 10 it was just a matter of when but fifth overall is especially what you're passing up on forward it's just I, I just couldn't see it at all. But with Simishev, he's a player that I think has a lot more potential than Ryan Bacher in a lot of ways. So we'll see if that if that if that gets to a good level of Arizona. We'll see. But I think all is for the Yotes. They haven't really turned out a lot of players that have lesser skating. Simishev is already a beautiful, blissful skater. And I think for the Yotes, that's something that they can build upon a lot. But the Flyers pick is in. I'm picking Leonard, y'all. What are you guys thinking in the chat? I think it's gonna be Leonard. The other live stream I watched was annoying. Yours is good. And with interacting with the commentators, great job. Thank you, Chuck. I got gotcha. you. That's the, I mean, that's the best part of this is, that you, is reacting to this with you guys. It's, it's, it's an honor to do this with y'all. Montreal's loaded on young defensemen. I mean, I can see why they take a D, man. I, I don't disagree with that. I, I think especially in the top end defensively, they could use a guy. But Reinbacher, I just think, is too much of a reach for me. I, and for me personally, where I had Reinbacher ranked item 16th overall, he goes up to 5th. So we'll see if that, we'll see if that works out for them. But now the Flyers are coming to the podium. We'll see who they pick. Nicholas, to be honest, Simishev at six, just trade down. Yeah, I all, I also agree. I, I though that's the thing. Like maybe there wasn't a trade to work out. I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I would agree with that. Because it seems like there was a lot less stock in Shimashev than um, than Reinbacher. But there was also the reports earlier today that 
uh, that Simashev has gotten a lot of higher draft stock because of him, just like Michkov being able to interview teams. And on, also there was the report that because of how well he was spoken, speaking English and how he conducted himself, that there was a lot of interest in him. So maybe they wouldn't have been able to successfully trade down. I don't know. But to me, Simashev would be a wild one. It's a wild one to have for the Oats. But I, I think that's a player that you can really build around on D for sure. Let us know again who you guys think the Flyers pick will end up being here. Oh, boy. I am I am nervous as heck for this one. A Leonard, I think, would be the slam dunk pick to make if you're the Flyers. It makes the most sense, I think, for them. But we'll see. The selection is about to be made. We will see who they go for. I mean, maybe it's Beachkov. I'm, I'm not sure. But, I mean, it's all over the place. Danny Barrier making the selection. We will see who goes seventh overall in the 2023 NHL entry draft. Mishkov is the pick! Whoa! Right? That's Mishkov. Oh my goodness, Mishkov is the pick! Yo, that's a dub for the Flyers, though, still. That is a dub. Wow, the Flyers did it! <laughs> wow. Wow. Danny Briere. Danny Briere. Oh my, the Flyers have selected Matthew Michkov 7th overall, and that is one heck of a pick to make. But Michkov, the skill set is unbelievable. He's a player that brings so much offensive potential with his shot and his puck handling, the confidence that he has with his hockey sense. He's able to make a play all throughout the ice and able to be so creative in doing so. But that is a confident pick by the Philadelphia Flyers. I like it a lot, man. This is the type of pick, though, the Flyers have needed for so long. High upside, high potential. This Flyers front office is different, and they show it with this pick. They could have gone for a Ryan Leonard. They could have gone for a Colby Barlow. They go for Matt Vamichkov, who brings easily the most enticing offensive skill set. Will he take a long time? Sure. But Philadelphia knows they're in a rebuilding mode right now. Matt Vamichkov is going to be fun with the flyers now we'll see if john tortorella is still there if he is then uh we'll see about that but seventh overall man i like that pick a lot for the flyers and if you're willing to wait man like the flyers seem to be that is a pick at seven that you'll take every single time every single time with the direction that philadelphia is in with their full rebuild matthew michkov that is a slam dunk that is a huge w that is a huge w wow what a pick what a pick blues have great options at 10th yeah that is true that is true and a lot of options that i think fill the, uh that fill their system well too but now michkov goes seven and now the capitals don't have matthew michkov on the board this is something that we were talking about earlier with the trade rumors washington wanted to move up in this draft potentially going to montreal spot at fifth overall even in arizona's pick at six because they had the potential of michkov being picked by philadelphia uh, there was some cold water today on, on Philadelphia's chances at Michkov, but they go out and select him here. That's awesome, man. And now this draft is getting even more crazy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Good for the Flyers. They deserve a pick like that, a high upside pick like that. And you'll love to see it. You love to see it. Hearing Leonard to Washington. I feel like Leonard has to be the pick, especially with the two D gone as well. I think Leonard makes a lot of sense for the Caps. Let us know down below, though. What do you guys think the Caps pick will end up being without Michkov on the board? Though I could see Dvorsky maybe being the pick as well for the Caps. <laughs> oh, man. Dvorsky, they need a young center. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the Caps are in a unique position right now with that eighth overall pick maybe they trade down maybe the capitals trade down they, that might be a sneaky trade down potential i'm not sure this is crazy this is crazy i could see the caps though i could see the caps trading this pick i would not be surprised do another ear at forsberg trade type <laughs> maybe maybe right now they're still uh, this pick is still on the board who are they gonna pick i i can see the caps though stalling this out and trying to make a trade happen though but the caps trading down would not surprise me best player available as of right now in my own personal rankings it's zach benson Ooh, zach benson Ooh. 
Zach Benson would be a really good capital. He'd be a really good capital. But yeah, Zach Benson is the best for me. I ranked him fifth overall in my rankings. But uh, for the players that have been picked so far, Connor Bernard went first. I had Adam Fantilli, two. He went third. Leo Carlson, third. He went second. I had Matthew Mishkov ranked fourth. He went up to seventh overall for the Flyers, which wasn't really a, a big surprise. Will Smith, I had sixth. He goes fourth overall to San Jose. I had Dimitri Simushev ranked ninth in my rankings. He goes sixth to the Yotes. And then I had David Ryan Barker, 16th, and he goes fifth overall to the Montreal Canadiens. So there you go. Up to this point, that's what, that's what, what we've seen. But man, man, this is great though for the for the Detroit Red Wings though. They'll have so many options with this pick no matter what. They could go for Ryan Leonard. They could go for Dvorsky. They could go for a Benson. I would imagine one of those three guys is gone by that pick, but there are some good options. There are some good options. But I mean, even Gabe Perot, I, mean, I predicted him to be the pick for the Red Wings earlier. Maybe he's the pick still. We'll see. It's going to be wild. Who went first overall? Um, Neil Yakupov. <laughs> That's the thing. I, I feel like now this pick is all over. The pick is in, though, for the Caps. We'll see who they go for. I'm going to... Who do I predict? Uh, you know, I think I predict Dvorsky. I think I'm going to predict Dvorsky. I, I, I have a feeling that the Caps... Like, like, um, uh, like Rich was talking about earlier, I, I have a feeling Dvorsky, they might be going for a center here, which would be amazing news for the for the Detroit Red Wings, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Alright. Alright, man. Eighth overall. I think Dvorsky will be the guy. Though, again, that shakes up a lot, though, for the Red Wings and also for the Blues pick, too, because, I mean, we've seen a lot about maybe Dvorsky being their pick, maybe them going for a center. If it is Dvorsky here, then that changes a lot. But we'll see. Just in general, man, this draft has been unreal. <laughs> I've just loved it so much. Leonard could fall the Blues. That would be an impeccable pick, like, in every way. I, that would be an absolute steal for me. Let us know, though, again, your late predictions for this pick. Who will end up being eighth overall? The pick is in, and the Caps are announcing the selection. Now, Ryan Leonard is the pick. There you go. Ryan Leonard will be a Washington Capital, and that is a solid pick for the Washington Capitals to make, man. Solid pick in every single way. I mean, when we look at it with Leonard, he's a player that brings a lot to the game, a lot of competitiveness, a lot of fierceness. He's a player that is extremely good all around, a fantastic transitional attacker too. And he's a player that will battle along the boards, bring physicality, bring great character, bring a fantastic hockey sense to the game offensively. And he's the type of player that I think will be a great top sixer for the Caps for a long time. Could be a centerman. We'll see if he does develop that way with Washington. But I like that pick a lot for the Caps. And I, I think for them, it'll work out pretty solidly. When Beach come off the board, Ryan Leonard is your pick by the Washington Capitals. Just a solid pick in general. Nothing that's going to blow you away. But at eighth overall, that is a solid pick for the Caps to make. And uh, would have been my pick besides Zach Benson. But now the Washington, now that now this changes a lot again because of the Detroit Red Wings. I would have said a Benson if uh, if Ryan Leonard was available. That would have been the guy they take. But now, I mean, Zach Benson's on the board. I don't know if Detroit does Detroit does Detroit reject Benson. This is the thing, though. I expected Benson to drop a little bit. We'll see if that continues. But who do the Detroit Red Wings pick? Will this finally be the time that Benson gets drafted? By the way, y'all, we are 19 likes away from 669. Y'all know what to do, all right? Hit that like button if you're enjoying the electricity tonight. We'd love to see you come by. Hit that like button. Support the stream. Everybody's appreciated. We'll see you, though. This is a wild pick, though, to me. I'm going to predict... I'm, I'm, uh, this is the thing, though. I can even see, I can see there being so many options for the Red Wings here. I mean, there has been reports of them maybe going after a defenseman, but to me, like Benson, Divor uh, Dvorsky, uh, even J uh, Gabriel Perot, I could see being the pick here for the Red Wings. Like, I could see them going up and selecting a guy like Perot ninth overall and kind of shocking the world, but this is all over the place, man. This is all over the place. I don't know if Benson's their pick. I just... I don't know. I don't know.
I think it might be Gabe Perot. The more I think about it, I just think Gabe Perot might be a player they really lean on, they really like with his complimentary play and the way he's able to command himself on the ice. We'll see. I, I, I'm all up in the air on this Detroit pick, man. I'm all up in the air. I, I would go Benson 100%, but I just think Detroit's going to wow us. Detroit Detroit loves to be different. Y'all know this already. Detroit loves to be different. I mean, they love it more than anything in the whole world. So I could see it happening. I could see it happening. Oh, this is, this is going to be crazy, man. I don't even. This is going to be crazy. <laughs> this draft, man. This has been, just from top to bottom, a wild one. I, I just love it. I just love it. Grab, I know how to make uh, you like Reinbacher pick better two words, Tyler Ruscha. That is true. They didn't pick Tyler Ruscha. <laughs> they didn't pick Tyler Ruscha. That is correct. Let us know as well. By the way, guys, let me uh, uh, put up the top 15 for you guys. Which ones, which tra uh, picks do you guys see most likely to be traded? We got right now Detroit, St. Louis, Vancouver, Arizona, then Buffalo, v Pittsburgh, Nashville, and then Calgary with the picks there. So we'll see. Maybe there's more on top of this. Maybe we see more trades. We haven't seen any trades so far in this draft, which has surprised me a lot because there was a lot of talk around, especially Nashville moving up, maybe Montreal getting rid of their pick, but none of those happened. I can see even a team like Vancouver maybe wanted to trade up or something. I mean, I don't, I don't know. This trade, this draft has been wild. Oh, sweat! Now it's 730 likes. You guys are absolutely killing it. Thank you for all the support so far. If you guys are enjoying the hype, we are here all throughout draft season to give you all the content you guys need: scouting reports, rankings, mock drafts, all of the info you guys know need on the NHL draft. We cover all throughout the year, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you get notified notified when all those videos come out and when we go live for everything. We're also gonna be live for day two tomorrow, so. Make sure, make sure you're there and putting that subscribe button so you guys don't miss that too. So that's going to be huge. And again, we'll be looking for the 2024 draft almost right after this, right after this couple of days. The pick is in for the Red Wings. We will see who they go after here. Somebody says Jaeger for uh, Elbas says Jaeger. Jaeger would be a wild pick by the Red Wings, man. That's that's a Red Wings pick right there. That's a Red Wings pick. Oh man. <laughs> That wouldn't surprise me, honestly. At, like, not at all. Not, uh, not at all. Oh, we hit 70,000 subscribers! I didn't even notice! I forgot to look! Can we get some 70k hype in the chat down below? Thank you guys so much! We're right now at 70,078 subscribers. Holy crap, you guys are unreal. Can we get some 70k hype in the chat down below? Holy! Holy! Man, thank you guys so much. The support tonight has been unreal and it's always my favorite day of the uh, uh, of the year. It's draft time, man, and it's so fun to be able to spend this time with y'all and react to these react to these picks with y'all too. It's been a blast so far. But the pick is in here for the Red Wings. We'll see who they go after. There were some people in the chat saying Jaeger. That would be really funny. <laughs> It would be. I mean, they got so many options here at forward if they want to go for it. Sports Dom with the two. Man, I'm really hoping Perogo goes Buffalo. He'd be perfect, I think, in Buffalo's system. If they're not going to go for a Russian like Daniel Boot, I would totally be on a Perot's side if I'm Buffalo. Just the exact type of prospect I want to bring onto that system. Just an amazing complimentary, complimentary player. They already got so many great play drivers off on the team and on the prospect pool already. And I think Perot brings a lot of what they don't have. A player that can play with the best players exceedingly well. And that's a great trait to have. Some people say it's easy to play with the best players, but Gabe Perot makes it look flawless. But here we go. The Detroit Red Wings could surprise the world here. We'll see who they pick with the ninth overall selection. Steve Eisman always loves to make a splash. We'll see who it ends up being. Thank you, Sports Dom. Oh! Whoa, Nate Danielson! <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Right? That's that Nate Danielson, man. That is interesting. A lot of people are not gonna like that pick. But you already got you guys already know I'm a huge Nate Danielson boy. All right, just an absolute beast in so many ways. And he's a player that I think for Detroit will really fit in well as a solid second line center. Nothing that's going to blow you away, but a player that will get a lot of the right, do a lot of the right things and plays the game at a pro level already. He played with Brandon this last year in the WHL and in 68 games, got 78, uh, 78 points, 
really was able to transform the offensive game and drive Brandon in every single way. A superb defensive player, always knows where to be positionally. He's not going to blow you away, but his leadership, his positioning, and the way he plays the game are, are, are at such a high level. He's the type of player that, as a center, can win you Stanley Cups. And I think for Detroit, now it's interesting. They could now have center core of Larkin, Danielson, Casper. A lot of guys that I think could fit in there well. But Nate Danielson is a fascinating pick at number six. A lot of people will say that's a bad pick. I don't know if I would have picked him ninth overall. Wouldn't have been my pick. I think I would have gone Zach Benson for sure. But Nate Danielson is a really interesting player and a fascinating pro player already. I had him ranked 15th overall. He goes ninth overall. But there she blows, man. Let us know in the chat down below. W or L for the Detroit Red Wings. I say, meh. I say, meh, meh. Maybe not the best pick in the world, but I mean, Eisman always does this, man. He always surprises. He always surprises. And I mean, Danielson is a player that I think in Detroit system will do very well. Very, very well. But I, I think it's very, yeah, it's an average pick. I wouldn't say it blows me away, but I think Danielson is a really underrated player. We'll see here though, man. Now we go on to the 10th overall pick and the St. Louis Blues. The Blues are in like the best position ever, man. I mean, they need to take Zach Benson. Like they need to, but they're probably not going to. They're probably going to select a center here. Nick Danielson was always my pick for the Blues, but I think it will be Dvorsky. I think it will be Dvorsky. Let us know down below what you guys think for the 10th overall pick. I think Dvorsky is, is, is the most likely for sure. For sure. Not even a question for me. But yeah, I, I would say the best way to describe that Red Wings pick is just meh. It's average. It's fine. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be a horrible pick, like some people might say. But he's not gonna. You know, he's not gonna be putting up point per game seasons like maybe a Zach Benson could. But we'll see. Lineup just right for St. Louis, though. Yep, yep. And as a Stars fan, I don't like it. After already the Blackhawks getting Bedard, but you know, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be serene. I'm gonna be cool about it. I'm gonna be serene. <laughs> I will say this also lines up well for the Vancouver Canucks. Um, they have some really interesting options here at 11 if they don't go Tom Willander. It's only game. Because, I mean, no matter what, they have Dvorsky or Benson available. And I think we've heard a lot about the Canucks' interest in ben and, uh, Dvorsky. I don't know. I, I feel like if the, if the Blues pick Dvorsky here, I don't, know if the, I don't know if the Canucks go Benson. I don't know. I don't think so. I really don't think they go for an undersized player here. So I could honestly see a situation here where Benson drops all the way to, like, 12th overall and that would be wild and even there's a chance there's even a chance the coyotes don't even pick him i mean this is like benson does not deserve to fall this low at all man we'll see i don't hate the danielson pick but i was hoping they would trade it i feel like for detroit they probably obviously zeroed in on danielson liked him a lot and i don't think he would have gone past uh st louis and vancouver What a brutal pick. Yuck for Raymond owners to the extremely fading on it is Eisman as a GM. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as that. I like Daniel. I'm a, I, I will admit though, I'm a big Danielson fan. I'm a huge Danielson fan. But this is the problem is that I don't feel like Danielson has the upside to contend with a player like Zach Benson. That's the thing. Like you're, 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 you're giving away the chance to play like Zach Benson, which I wouldn't have done. I would have picked Zach Benson there, just gone best player available. But Danielson, I think could do a lot for them. But let's see. Let us know in the chat down below. What do you guys think for the St. Louis pick here at 10th overall? I'm, I'm going to say Dvorsky. I, I, I think it really will be Dvorsky there. But we'll find out. I feel like it's got to be Dvorsky. It's got to be Dvorsky, right? I mean, uh, Richard's saying, Richard's saying more. I, I feel like more would be a really good pick by the Blues, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, I just don't. I just don't know if, I don't know if there's a fit there. I don't, I don't know. I don't see it. I can't get over the Simashev pick. <laughs> I can't get over the Reinbacher pick, man. I'm, I don't, I'm still, I'm still grieving from that bro i am still grieving from that this is insane i i just, oh just oh just oh my goodness oh my goodness man
Can't believe it. Can't believe it. How's everyone go doing? I uh, hope everyone and every uh, everything and everyone is going well. Fantastic, Patrick. It's good to have you tonight. The pick is in for the Blues, so we will see who they pick here shortly. Again, get your predictions down below. And again, we can see some massive trades still throughout the rest of this first round, so do not go anywhere. I expect a lot of trading up and trading down throughout the second half of this draft especially. So do not go anywhere, y'all. Still a lot of action to come. But through 10 picks, it looks like there is no trades to announce, which is surprising for sure. I can see Chalet uh, going down a little bit, for sure. Having the UK, 120 in the morning here. Collector, shout out to you. I mean, that's the grind set right there, man. 1.20 a.m., but you're still here. Thank you so much, King. Or Queen. Oh, Dallas Rudovorsky is the pick. There you go. St. Louis goes for the soul back centerman. Dvorsky is your pick at number 10. Let us know down below a W or L for the Dvorsky pick. To you, Dvorsky. I'm not as high on him as some other people. I had him 18th in my rankings, but I feel like Dvorsky makes a lot of sense for the St. Louis Blues. Fantastic physical player, really solid defensively and really capable on defense, especially when it comes to retrievals and the way he's able to command himself in the middle of the ice. He's a player that will project as a centerman. There won't be any problem about that. Has the size and the tool set to get there. There are problems, in my opinion, with the skating and, and the acceleration and the offensive uh, potential that he has because I think there is some things besides his shot that are a little bit worrisome. But his shot is great. His shot is fantastic. And he showed that in the World Juniors, just how good it was. He got eight goals in seven games in the U18s. And it was amazing. He's a guy that, as a shooting first centerman who can bring some good physical traits, I don't hate it for the Blues. And I think they'll round him up pretty well as a middle six guy for them. I, I'm still hesitant to say he'll be a second line center for them. But he could be right on that borderline. As a, maybe a fantastic third liner. So, so second line center. That would be what I would predict. But we'll see. We'll see. Dvorsky will be an interesting fit in St. Louis. And he makes a lot of sense. He makes a lot of sense. But now Vancouver's on the on the cards here with Zach Benson potentially on the board here. We're going to see. We're going to see, y'all. The top 10, though, is officially locked in. Y'all, if... if let, let's let's look at this. If y'all if y'all predicted Connor Bedard, Leo Carlson, Adam Fantilli, Will Smith, David Reinbacher, Smith, Michelle, Michkov, Leonard, Danielson, Dvorsky, I will give you so many cookies. I will give you all the cookies in the entire world. But that is the top 10 in the 2023 NHL draft. I'm just looking at it right now. I am just, I can't even believe it. <laughs> I can't even believe it. This is insane. This is insanity. I, I'm just looking at this. I don't even, I still don't believe this is real. I, I, there's no way. There's no way. It can't be. It can't be, right? It can't be. Are, are we still sure this is real? This is the thing, though, is that I think for the Canucks, Tom Willander has been linked to them so much. And I, I just I don't know if they pass on him. He just seems like such a Vancouver player, um, whereas Zach Benson, maybe they go for him. I mean, that's the thing. Zach Benson is a, is a BC kid. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, he's from Langley, BC. Maybe they go for the BC kid. We'll have to find out. Q, thank you so much for subscribing. David, what's going on? I predicted Simichev going 9 to Detroit. Not surprised he went 6. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, especially with what we saw today, I'm not surprised he went high. Uh, there was a lot of rumors of him going higher because of his great interviews, and I'm, I'm not surprised he went that high. My favorite number is 3. What's your favorite number 1 through 10? Um, Probably 7. Probably 7. <laughs> yeah, no trades yet. No trades yet. Benson won't fall past the Penguins. I I don't see it. Like, that would be dream scenario for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Dream scenario. Here's the thing, though. I could see a chance where that does happen, though. Because I'm not sure if the Sabres go for him. Again, still players like Gabriel Polo, uh, Gabriel Polo of Rowe are on the board. I'm going to say for the rest of this top five, let's predict the rest of this top five right now. We got Vancouver, Arizona, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and Nashville. I'm going to say Vancouver still goes Tom Willander. I'm going to say Arizona goes for Gabriel Polo Perot. I'm going to say Vancouver goes for... Or I'm going to say uh, Buffalo goes for Zach Benson in the end because I just think they have to. I think I think Pittsburgh is going to go for Matthew Wood. Nashville is going to go for Braden Yeager. That's what I'm thinking right now for the rest of this top uh, 15 at least. Vancouver still hasn't made their pick. We'll see if they end up trading it. There could be the potential of that. Two minutes left on the pick. Colby Barlow will be wild. <laughs> kind of surprised Colby Barlow hasn't gone that high. Considering the traits he has. Do you think the Islanders do anything tonight? I don't think they do. No trades. I 
I, I, I the rest of this top 10 is gonna be goofy though all right canucks are gonna make their pick canucks are gonna make their pick oh boy i mean i'm i'm, I'm kind of nervous for this one i can't even lie i feel like tom Molander will still be the pick here though we'll see i'm surprised they are making the pick i honestly thought they might have traded down i think it would have been smart for them but if they if they pick zach benson instead then sure yeah pick it sure why not please seattle trade up and take benson or more yeah benson's still uh more still on the on the uh, on the availability which doesn't surprise me patrick thank you for the five appreciate it king can we get some patrick hype in the chat down below thank you so much my man love to see it let's get some more patrick love he deserves it oh crap i didn't have the canucks pick up there there we go all right there we go there we go all right y'all i'm i'm saying we'll honor i'm saying we'll honor but we'll see things are gonna get a little bit more crazy here thank you patrick love you bud oh boy crystal i would not expect at all i would not expect at all the reason why i don't think it's gonna be benson is just because we've gotten reports that they don't want to 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 draft a smaller player and i feel like we'll order fix uh checks a lot of boxes for especially with the connection on their defense so we'll see oh from elliot freeman tom willander will be the vancouver canucks pick willander is the selection for the canucks there you go there you go willander is the pick by vancouver and that doesn't surprise me whatsoever that doesn't surprise me whatsoever man tom willander going here to the vancouver canucks that's pretty wild that's pretty wild now tom willander is a fascinating player has great motor six foot one 179 pounds and is a just a supreme defensive player the retrieval success the the entry prevention he's so good in that department he's a player that can skate well can use his puck handling solidly he has some sneaky ups offensive upside and is decent physically i i don't know how much true upside there really is i don't know if he'll be able to reach that top pairing type of min eater but i think he's a guy that could round out as a, an amazing maybe third defenseman who brings just a great overall game as a d-man but i don't think it's a horrible pick i was lesser on will under than a lot of people i had him more towards the end of the first round but I can see why you take him. And the tools there, I think Vancouver could round it a lot and, and take advantage of a lot as well. But let us know in the chat down below, a W or L, what are you guys thinking for this one? I mean, to me, with um, with Benson there, I I wouldn't have gone for Willander, but eh, it is what it is. You missed it again? Patrick, missed what? Oh, and then makes seven level of the streams. Patrick, I'm sorry, King. I'm sorry. Thank you for the two. For the five and the two patrick we love you thank you for the don't know i was i was trying i was getting i was stressed about the vancouver canucks pick i'm sorry i'm sorry my man <laughs> but y'all if you guys are enjoying the draft updates hit that subscribe button so you get all the content all throughout the year so much is also gonna be made around the 2024 drafts you will not want to go anywhere and we're gonna be giving you so much content throughout the next few days too so we'll want to see you there for that and right now next up we have the arizona coyotes pick a lot could go down here. You still have Gabriel Polro. You still have Zach Benson. You still have some really good players here. For my best players available, right now, Zach Benson is the clear cut. I had him ranked fifth overall in my rankings. Then Oliver Moore at number eight. Axel Sandin Palika comes in at number 10. Quinton Mun Musty at number 11 with Colby, Colby Barlow coming up at number 12. Gavin Brilliant at 13. Gabriel Polo at 14. And that rounds out the next few best players available, in my opinion. But uh, there's a lot of options here for these next few teams, man. A lot of good forward options, for sure. Got that sneaky donation. True. True. Only, it's only game. Why does it have to be mad? December, thank you so much for subbing. Do the, King, do the Kings have a first, uh, second round pick uh, this year? I don't know. They, they gave up a second round pick, right, in the Dubois deal? Didn't they? Yeah, they do have a second round pick this year. No first round pick, though. They have their own second round pick this year. All right, boys, some big picks here upcoming with the Coyotes second pick. And we got next up the Sabres, Penguins, Preds, and Flames. This is where it could get really crazy. And I think we'll see a few trades as well. And we just hit 800 likes. Thank you guys so much. Continue to hit that like button. Every single bit supports the stream. And if you're enjoying the excitement, we'd love to have you hit that like button. Be a part of the Grab Gang. And hit that subscribe button as well with us. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see it. Any trade rumors in the works? Nothing crazy right now. I'll update you guys as we go. 
I'm really shocked, genuinely shocked that we haven't seen a trade yet. Really, really shocked. Oh, man. Oh, boy. All right, the pick is in for the Coyotes. They already picked Simashev here. What are our predictions? I think it'll be Perot. I think it'll be Perot. I just, for the, I mean, that's the thing though. The Coyotes, of course, took Cooley. So maybe they, maybe they think Benson's the best player available. But I could see a Perot. I could see a Barlow here. We'll see. I definitely don't think more. I think more is out of the question. I think it's between, I think it's between Barlow and Perot with maybe an outside chance with, uh, with Zach Benson. Maybe even a Daniel Boot, honestly. I could see potentially a 12. 12. We'll see here, though. The pick is in for the Yotes. And as we've seen before already with that six overall pick, the Yotes, just like the Red Wings, go crazy sometimes. Oh, no. I, they're, the Coyotes are the last team to pick Crystal, in my opinion. There's no chance. Like, actually zero. Especially here. Um, just like the size and his lack of skating, there's no way. There's no way. Any goalie going in the first? I would say the most likely is Michael Robble, uh, maybe in the last few picks, but I think we're going to see a, like a goalie explosion in the early second round. Dr. Dar, respect. Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to the crowd, gang. Appreciate it, big man. Wood is overrated. I agree. I agree. I don't love Wood's skating uh, fundamentals. He's a player that I'm a little bit lower on, um, but we'll see. I have him 28th on my rankings. Can see Balika going to Buffalo? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if they're gonna if they're gonna take a D man, it would be a bigger one. I and I, I just don't know. I feel like they would trade back if they're gonna go for a D, at least right with their current spot. Dawson the Wings number nine pick. Danielson is a great leader, fantastic discipline and, and defensive game, and I think he's gonna round out as a solid, okay second line center. Nothing that's gonna wow you, but he plays the the game at such a competitive level, and his offensive game has been getting better and better, and ha that talent has been showing more and more uh throughout the last little bit so i think danielson could be really cool really fun really fun and 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 competitive in detroit and kind of a player that alongside marco casper would be a player i wouldn't want to play against in the playoffs especially halton at 12th overall would actually make me scream <laughs> would actually make me scream with that if that's the coyotes pick i i don't even know what i would do i'm gonna be honest i'm still gonna predict here gabriel perot i'm still gonna pick here gabriel perot we'll see Bryson, what's going on? Uh, in my humble opinion, Reinbacher was the pick with the halves needed a right-side defenseman. We'll see. Only, it's only game. Why does this have to be mad? Wait. Oh, is it? Was it boot? I think it is. Oh, baby. I called that a little bit. Not not that much. I, I said there might be a chance Daniel Boot is the pick. Daniel Boot is the pick here for the Arrows and the Coyotes. Wow. That... Uh, really wow 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 <laughs> wow Daniel Butte being the pick by the Coyotes is wild they go for Butte they go for Simashev they go for the all Russians to me, Daniel Butte is a fascinating player that has some great potential. I ranked him 21st in my rankings. I definitely would not have gone for that, especially over Zach Benson. But for the Coyotes, with how they've drafted, it makes sense. Six foot five, he's an actual mammoth. He's an actual truck out there. And I think Daniel Butte is going to be really interesting in Arizona. The problem is his skating is clunky. It's inconsistent. It doesn't have a great motor. It doesn't have a lot going for it. And to me, I think that will be something, especially in Arizona system, that will hold him back a lot. But I do like the shooting tendencies. I like how he's able to dig around the ice and get in dirty areas. And he's not the, even the most physical player for his size at six foot five. But using that more is going to be something that could unlock that potential. He's a player though that has some really great hands, has some really great uh, plays inside the net and around the air and around that area, and knows how to cook around the net and generate high danger chances. Great shooter in that department, solid passer. The offensive talent is there. And if you can round out that physical play and get a little bit more explosiveness skating wise, I could see him becoming a top six four. I, I could see it becoming that. But in Arizona system, I'm not sure if that happens. That's the thing. I'm not sure if that happens. Let us know in the chat down below though. Is that a W or an L? Now we have still have Zach Benson. Man, is Zach Benson the Cole Caulfield of this draft? Is Zach Benson the, the Cole Caulfield? 
<laughs> Unbelievable, man. Only, it's only game. Wow. I can't believe it. I can't believe it, though. Daniil Buett, that's crazy. Not my name. Thank you so much for subbing. <laughs> man i what we've seen so far oh and i i didn't even realize the counties have their third jersey out there on the draft floor let us know though guys where does benson go where does benson go right now i have no clue like this is this is kind of worst case scenario i think for benson because i think i think the sabers would work but i don't know i don't know if they go for that i don't know if they go for that maybe the oh man the penguins oh he there's no way he goes past the penguins there's no way he goes past the penguins there's just no chance there's no chance you you think right i mean he would be perfect in pittsburgh perfect this this whole draft has been crazy i agree yeah <laughs> Stenberg to Buffalo? Stenberg would be wild. Butte and Simichev play together for a little more. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that the Yotes would want to bring them together. It's a fun pairing to have. I'll say that. As a Yotes fan, this is pain. Yeah, I like Simichev though, so I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too mad about that. Daniel Butte, if he if he this is the thing though. Both Butte and Simichev are two players that potential wise could be a top a top six forward and to me a top pairing defenseman respectively if arizona is able to unlock that if they have full confidence in their in their development then yeah i could see why you'd take these two guys there but i also see arizona's development system and i weep for these two players <laughs> so we'll see we'll see let us know though what are you guys predicting for the buffalo Sabres? i still i think it's gonna be gabriel perot but again it's just like the Caulfield situation. It's like they have to pick him there, and then he doesn't get picked, and then it's like, oh, the next team has to pick him, and then they don't pick him, and then it just then he falls to 16th overall, and you're like, what the heck just happened here? So I don't know. I'm gonna say Gabriel Perot because that's just what we're seeing tonight. Next stage Thompson, I wouldn't say that. No, <laughs> but he's got some great skill for it for his size for sure. Al Axel Sandy Polico would surprise me if he get this pick, honestly. But we got 2,000 people still in the stream. Thank you guys all for coming in and enjoying the draft content. Right now, we got some big picks up coming to round out this top 15. And we'll see how it how it turns out. I like the Simichev pick, but why would you avoid Benson Perot more? I wouldn't. Um, at least I wouldn't uh, have taken over Benson or more. But Simichev is, is, to me, the, the biggest potential defenseman of this draft. Alan, thank you so much for subscribing. Why do the Blues get another center? They don't have a lot of, like, amazing centermen in the system. But, I mean, it just depends over whether you see Zach Dean and, um, and Bull Duke as centermen. I, I don't know if they'll translate perfectly, but we'll see. Oh, two back-to-back -back donos! James with the five! What is going on in Nashville Grab? I'm surprised the GMs are making trades, uh, assuming they're in the same room with each other. Yeah, I'm shocked. The pick is in here for the Buffalo Sabres as well, folks. And then Michael coming with a 30 Canadian. What the heck is happening to my boy Benson? Somebody drafted him. So true, Michael. So true. Zach Benson is the new Cole Caulfield, y'all. Zach Benson is the new Cole Caulfield. We'll see who the Sabres pick. This will be an interesting one. This will be a very interesting one. All right, the Sabres are selecting. Man, I sure hope they go for Benson. That would be so fun. Come on. That would be so fun if they go for Benson. Imagine how good... That, I already ranked them as the best prospect pool after the 2022 draft. I mean, Benson getting that getting there would just be unfair. Who are they going to pick? Oh, it is! Oh, it is! Holy! <laughs> wow. Buffalo. Buffalo takes Benson 13th overall boys can we get some w's in the chat down below the buffalo sabers the buffalo sabers mayday mayday 
Oh man, what a W pick for the Buffalo Sabres, man. You can't go wrong with Zach Benson, 13th overall. That is a beautiful, beautiful pick to make in every single way. To me, Zach Benson is the best defensive forward in this draft, and it's not just because of pedigree. It's what he does on the ice. The way he sees the ice, the vision he has is top tier. Positionally, he is astounding. He's always where the puck is going to be. He always makes the right plays along the boards. Always is so good in the middle of the ice, and especially defensively in his own zone, can create turnovers, create havoc, and really make things uncomfortable for the other team. His skating isn't elite, but I think it will be good enough. And you combine that with a fantastic passing game and an offensive ceiling that to me is sky high. And to me, Zach Benson could be a first line player in the future, but an amazing two way guy in the future as well. If he rounds out that frame, watch out, man. That is a steal at 13th overall. What a pick by the Buffalo Sabres. That is a buff a dub right there. A buff a dub. Reds with a 279. Jets have too many forwards. Do you think D-Men for first? Maybe. I mean, maybe Oliver Bonk is their pick 18th overall, Wrench. And then Robert with the 10. Thank you for the two donos, you kings. Appreciate it a ton. Thank you for all the donos, all y'all recently. Over the past few minutes, you guys have been freaking killing it. This first round has been so huge. I mean, this that, that, that pick by the Sabres is beautiful, man. That pick by the Sabres is beautiful. Their scouting department is just beautiful, man. Beautiful. I love that pick, man. I'm so happy for Sabres fans. They're going to be so dominant, dude. I mean, you already look at that prospect pool and what they have. It's actually insane. Let me look at the Sabres. I mean, it's just it's just unfair. It's, it's genuinely unfair what they have to work with. Oh, man. Right now, by the way, in their, uh, just over the last few years, they got Savoy, Oisland. You got, of course, still prospects like eyes on, uh, eyes like Rosen and players like Yuri Kulich and the, how good Yuri Kulich has done this draft uh, this last year and what he's done. It's been insane. Now the Penguins, unfortunately for them, won't be uh, having the chance at Benson. But to me, this is Gabe Pro all day, every day for the Pittsburgh Penguins. All day, every day. And to me, he just makes so much sense. So much sense for them. But maybe they go for a more high ceiling pick. I mean, Gabriel Burrow is a guy that I think is a little bit more of a rover on his own line, but is a fantastic complimentary player. So if the Penguins are going full rebuild, if they think that Pro won't be there before Sidney Crosby and Malkin retire, then maybe they go for a higher upside pick. Maybe they go for Oliver Moore. I think it might be more or Pro to Pittsburgh. I don't know though. I don't know. I would go. I would go more if I'm Pittsburgh, just for like the pure talent ceiling. But maybe they're a team that trades down. Maybe they're a team that trades down. JT Miller to the Penguins, possibly. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> really hope Chris will be available to the Hawks in 19. I think he definitely will be Snake. I don't know. I, I feel like Musty just makes a lot of sense for the Hawks at, at 19, though. That's the thing. Please, Seattle, trade up and tra and get more. That would be wild. That would be wild. Robbie, thank you so much for subbing. <laughs> Lafreniere for the 14th. Imagine. Imagine how funny that would be. Pick is in, though, for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Still no trades, man. Still zero trades. This is like that's genuinely all a lot of these picks have been surprising. That might be the most surprising thing of this draft so far. Zero trades. Zero trades. <laughs> okay y'all i'm thinking pro i think i i don't know i'm thinking pro will be the pick here for the pens we'll see what they go for dubas's first pick as pittsburgh penguins g uh director of hockey operations Sixteenth overall and Hannafin for Letty neighbors twenty fifth and twenty nine. What the? <laughs> that would be wild. Already pre ordered my Bedard jersey. I mean, if you're a Blackhawks fan, you deserve that. All right, y'all. The Penguins selection is being made. We'll see who they go for. I mean, maybe Barlow. I don't know. This Penguins pick could be all over the place. 
Bullinator, thank you so much for subscribing. Let's see. All right. Wait. Wait, who? What? 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 <laughs> okay, Pittsburgh. Go right ahead, man. Go right ahead. The Pittsburgh Penguins select Braden Yeager, 14th overall. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't like that pick at all. That's just that's just a stinky pick, in my opinion. Over Oliver Moore, that's a stinky pick. Now, Brain Yeager, I think, will be a solid second line guy, maybe. Maybe. Um, but he has uh, some problems for me. Um, he has some good tools. His shot is brilliant, but it kind of just regressed in a lot of ways this last year. Um, he's not a very physical player. I don't think his passing game is extraordinary. Um, his hockey sense is pretty solid, and I think he'll be an okay dual threat decent offensive second line player maybe if he really peaks but his defensive game is horrible um i just don't like the physicality he really brings he can be a little bit too aggressive for my liking he's a player that i'm a little bit sour, i'm a little bit more soured on compared to a lot i have him 22nd in my rankings but he's a player that i often come up a little bit frustrated with but to pick him over a player like oliver moore is fascinating i mean oliver moore isn't a saint by any means he can make some weird decisions too but uh that to me is a bit of an l pick that's especially what the options that they had that might be like one of the picks one of the picks so far that to me is just kind of unjustifiable in my opinion but we'll see i don't like that i don't like that pick and i'll go on a limb and say i don't like that pick but uh, i really don't like that pick at all with the uh, that's and again most of it depend and most of it is of course because of the options Pittsburgh had Oliver Moore I think would have been perfect if they were going for a high ceiling player Jaeger is high ceiling I guess but there's a really low floor there too and I don't know I don't know I'm not sure about that I'm really not sure Detroit probably still going bonk that'd be really funny I'd like I'd like I'd like Detroit going for bonk that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> But Brian Yeager is the pick by the by the Penguins. And for the Preds, they still have Barlow. They still have Perot. They still have more available. I don't know. They, uh, this is tough because I think for the Preds, it, it's the exact same situation as like when um, like when Mishkov went to Philly, where I think the next team would have absolutely taken him. But I think for Pittsburgh, Yeager would have been my choice. But now Nashville has a ton of options. Chilling with the two. Pens pick Yarmir Yager just like they did 30 years ago. Year ago. 30 years ago. I mean, I mean. I don't even know what to predict, though, for this Preds pick. I don't know if they go Oliver Moore. I just don't really see that. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. This, this, this next pick, I genuinely don't have an idea. I genuinely don't. Um, maybe more. Maybe a, maybe Axel Sandy Polika, if they're going to go for a, a defenseman, that would be the most likely D-man pick that I would make if I'm Nashville. The pick is in for the Preds. Yeah, Rich, I agree. AS, if, a, if any D-man is picked in with this pick, I think it will be ASP. We'll see. This this one is wild. This one is wild. No, Ethan Gauthier will be a, a blue. There's no there's no chance he's not. I'm sorry. The, the hockey universe will make him a blue. Yeah, I mean, Matthew Wood maybe could be the pick. We'll see here. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they I feel like they would go a centerman if they had their their say in like a Jaeger. But I feel like they still go forward. I, I don't know if they go Colby Barlow. The fact that Colby Barlow is still available is shocking. Genuinely shocking. Genuinely shocking to me. Just with what GMs like in that size, skill, and shooting game, I'm shocked. I'm shocked that Barlow drop has dropped this far. But you know what? I'm going to say, I think Perot makes a lot of sense for the Preds. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like Perot makes sense. I feel like Perot makes sense. I'm going to predict Perot here. But I'm not sure. I'm really not sure about this. The, like, the only other, like, center, I don't really, there's no centermen that I think really fit Nashville, amazingly, that are still available, of course, 
Maybe Callum Ritchie? Maybe? That's the only thing I can think of. I don't think they go for Charlie Stramel here. This is weird. I, I haven't... I... Maybe, maybe, maybe... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking pro. I'm thinking pro. Maybe Callum Ritchie, though. Maybe Callum Ritchie. Every time Grab touches his nose, you have to take a drink. Well, cheers, Matthew. <laughs> cheers to you, my man. Super Monkey with a 279. Thank you so much, King. Appreciate you. Appreciate the donation. Let's get some super hype. Some super hype. All right, y'all. I'm picking per uh, Perot. I'm picking Perot, but this Preds pick, I have no idea how to track, honestly. Because I don't feel like the players that I would have thought they would like are really available, particularly. All right, here it goes. 15th overall to the Preds. Let's see who is the pick. Oh, Matthew Wood. Okay. 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 Interesting. Very interesting for the National Predators. Now, for Matthew Wood, if they're able to fix his skating, this is a great pick. If they're able to fix Matthew Wood's skating, this is a great pick. But to me, that is by far the biggest thing that could limit Matthew Wood at the next level. In terms of production, stellar in the NCAA level. Four, 34 points in 35 games was unbelievable. But... Here's the thing, his skating is clunky and it's not very efficient, it's not very fast. And I think for a player that plays the game he has, that might be a problem in the next level. But his shooting game is impeccable. The way he's able to fake off passes, the way he's able to deke around the boards and the way he's able to use his physical play, he's huge too. Six foot three, 190 pounds. If he's able to round out that skating, then you got a player here that would be a great top six forward. The problem is that skating is such a big problem that I had a little lower in my rankings at 28th overall. But this is a player that if Nashville's confident they can get to a good level skating-wise, then you you are fine making that pick. You are fine making that pick. But as of right now, with how I project him skating-wise, I don't know if he'll overcome it completely. I think it might be a problem at the next level, and that'll stay the same. Kind of like a Josh Anderson type. Um, but if it's even overall, I don't think you hate that pick. It wouldn't have been the pick I made at all. But I don't think it's franchise-destroying either. We'll see, though. There's still a lot of options, though, left. For my best players available, you still got Oliver Moore available, which isn't too surprising. But you got Axel Sandin, Palika, Quinton Byfield, Colby Barlow still on the board. Gavin Brindley, Gabe Burrow is still available as well. Mikhail, uh, Mikhail Gulayev, you got Andrew Crystal, Otto Stenberg. Um, Grayson Sachin is there as well, but I see him getting tra uh, picked definitely later in the first. But now we go on to the rest of this, of this, of this to top 20, and it kind of gets a little bit interesting here. Because we got Calgary, we got Detroit, Winnipeg, Chicago, and Seattle. Now, let's predict the rest of this of this right here, shall we? Shall we, folks? Let me uh, get this. We can kind of see a little bit more um, of the actual picks themselves. Sorry about this, y'all. Give me a second. All right, so there we go. So we got 60 overall with the Flames. We got the Red Wings at 17. Shaggy, who do you think is going to be the Dylan Duke of this draft? Uh, well, I don't know. I feel like maybe a player... I mean, Duke was in my mid-20s, and he ended up falling a lot. Maybe maybe a player like... Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe a player like Tanner Molendyke. I, I'm potentially, he's in my later 20s, but I don't know how far he falls. That's the problem. And that's the big thing. Now we go into the Calgary Flames here, though, at 60 overall. Thank you, Shaggy, for the dono. Let's get some high form in the chat. And here he is as your last donator. But yeah, I mean, I, I feel like Tanner Mullenbeck might be my choice, but he's a D-man. It doesn't quite fit it perfectly. Um, maybe a Luca Pinelli. He's 33rd on my rankings. I could see him falling, honestly, like the third round because of his not amazing skating, but we'll see. It'll depend on a lot. Hello from Sweden at 3 a.m. Well, welcome to the stream. Great to have you tonight. Hansik is Calgary pick. Honestly, yeah. I mean, Calgary, I think, could definitely pick Hansik. They, I mean, they make a lot of sense for him. But 16th overall, I, I don't know, though, how they... I feel like Calgary is in a position where I don't know 
I mean, they have a whole new front office too. That's the thing. So I don't know if they go for big. That's a that's the problem. We don't really know Calgary's wants or wishes. They've gone for big a lot in the past, but now Daryl Sutter isn't there and he doesn't have any influence. So we'll see. <clears throat> I feel like I'm, if I'm the Flames, I'm absolutely running up to the podium to select um, Oliver Moore. But there's so many forwards available right now. Still, you got Moore, you got Perot, you got you got you got, you got Barlow. A lot of guys still on the board. Hail, thank you so much for subscribing. Appreciate it. And if you guys haven't hit that subscribe already, make sure you want, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't. We'd love to have you here all throughout the draft process, all throughout the year, because we make content on next year's draft as well. And you won't want to miss any of that. We're going to be here for all the streams, all the rankings, all the mock drafts, all the scouting reports. So if that interests you, make sure you join the crowd gang because we'd love to have you here. Now, we got this next pick, pick 16th overall. I want to know your guys' thoughts. We got it. The pick is in here. The pick is in. Uh, because the thing is, I feel like they could really go for a defense, but I don't know how they, I don't know how they pass up on the players that are available right now. Personally, is this the place where Gabe Perot goes? I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I mean, here's the thing. I, I I'm gonna go for a little bit of, of a of a. I was about to say hot take. No pun intended. I'm gonna go for a little bit of a hot take here. I'm going to say, I'm going to say the Calgary Flames. I'm going to say the Calgary Flames end up picking Quinton Musty. I have, a, I just have a feeling inside of me that Quinton Musty will be the Calgary Flames pick. Now, this is on no, no evidence or anything of the contrary. We'll see. Craig Conroy is out to make the pick. 16th overall for the Calgary Flames. His first pick as a GM. We'll see who he goes for. Tim, thank you so much for subbing. Oh, there was a fly that went on to his, his head. What the heck is going on right now? <laughs> There's a fly around Craig Conroy's head. Oh, boy. This is funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Can he stop talking, please? Just make the pick. Make the pick. We don't care. Samuel Hanzik. Wow. Samuel Hanzik is the pick. That's crazy. That is crazy. You know what, Calgary? Go right ahead, I guess. <laughs> go right ahead if you, I guess. Wow. Looks like Samuel Hanzik will be the pick by the Calgary Flames, 16th overall. Um, I would say that's on the tier of Nate Danielson. I could see why. You would make a pick like this. Wouldn't have been my pick at all. In terms of my position on 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 um, on Hansik, I had ranked 30th overall. But he's a player that is really fascinating. And is in a good position, I think, with Calgary. I mean, it depends on how they really play him, in my opinion. He has a great shot, and his physicality is fantastic. I mean, he's 6'4", 184, 5 pounds. Plays like it on every single shift. He's going to be a hard hitter. He's going to be a player that just battles along the boards. And does a great job fishing pucks out and getting to the net in that way he's great and he's efficient in that way too but he's not very fancy i don't think he's the most talented player in the world his puck handling isn't elite i don't think his hockey sense is great either and his skating isn't amazing either but i think there's some good characteristics you can build upon that shooting and physical game is solid and that passing game is pretty all right but i don't know if that's an upside pick at all for the flames at all like i could see him being a really amazing like third line forward but I don't know how much he gets past that for me, at least. But we'll see. Let us know in the chat down below. W or L. I just think, again, with the options you had with Moore, Perot, Barlow, just like so many good forwards that to me that had a much bigger upside. I wouldn't have gone for it, but Hansik was going to go high in this draft. It, 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 it made sense that he was going to go high in this draft. That's the thing, though. Bar like It's crazy to me that, that a player like Hansik will go so high, but Barlow won't. Like, Barlow has the offensive talent and the skill set and the goal scoring and the the drive to the net that i don't think hansik will ever have um and i don't know i just see barlow he's like he's not the most skilled player in the world but I, i'd say a lot better skill set than than hansik not as big but plays a physical game as well we'll see we'll see it's definitely a safer pick though but now this makes things interesting for the detroit red wings man this is wild the Red Wings now already selected Nate Danielson. They have to go Perot, right? They have to go Perot. 
There's no way, right? Or do they go for all of them more? This is the Red Wings. Can we get some W's in the chat for the Red Wings? This is on a this is a perfect situation for them, man. Perfect situation. Like to me, I think Perot could be really a great fit there. Maybe they go for more for the pure upside. Barlow could be a great goal scorer. I think it has to be between those three, though, right? You'd have to think. You'd have to think. <laughs> we'll see, though. I think winger as well, Richard. I think it might be between Perot and uh, Barlow. But the fact that Perot, Barlow, and... I mean, more isn't too surprising, but it's still pretty crazy that he could be had at the 17th overall pick, you know? Barlow would not surprise me in the hockey town, for sure. Barlow would not surprise me. <laughs> more with veneers please oh yeah the kraken at 20th overall they are they have a ton of options and i mean initially i thought the jets could be selecting a d-man with that 18th overall pick they still might but they have so they'll have so many offensive options no matter what that they might want to go for they might want to go for a forward here anyways We'll see. We'll find out, though, with the 17th overall pick. ASP with the Red Wings will be fun, for sure. <laughs> Lika is a perfect fit for the Kraken, too. Yeah, I would love it. I, would, I mean, alongside Ty Nelson and Riker Evans, I mean, the Kraken would have... A pretty great prospect pool defensively. I agree, Gregory. Yeah, I, I think David Enstrom is going to go pretty high. More likely, I would say, in the early 20s, like maybe to the Rangers pick, but I would not be surprised. Jim Nilge? What? Jim Nilge just won a, a general manager of the year? <laughs> Wow. Jim Nil just went GM of the year. <laughs> I mean, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Bro's the new Connor Garland lights the lamp during the draft year and for some reason falls during the draft. I can see it. I can see it, honestly. Bro, I, I'm not, I'm not to like super high on, but I still had him uh, 14th in my rankings. I think, as, again, as a great complimentary player, he would be amazing, but I, it looks like teams just aren't um, aren't prioritizing that. But yeah, Jim Nill wins general manager of the year. Holy. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. We right now got 1,800 in the chat. Thank you guys so much for coming, and we're about to get to this Detroit Red Wings pick, and we'll see who it is. Get your predictions down below. I'm going to say for Detroit, it's Colby Barlow, but we'll see what happens. I got to go to the bathroom real bad, though, and I'll be right back, y'all, so do not go anywhere. All right, y'all. All right, let's go. 17th overall to Detroit. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. How was the St. Louis pick? Fine, Gavin. I mean, divorce school will be solid for them. Nothing incredible, but I think it's like a meh, meh second light center. Be fine in that position. Adam seems like a nice guy. Columbus, lucky to have him. Oh, absolutely. Fantilli is going to be at a butte in Columbus. Meet the Musty Soderblom Monstrous line. Oh, that would be sick. Musty being the Red Wings pick would be awesome. I would really like to see that. I love you guys know I love Quinton Musty. I think he'd be sick in that position. 
Can someone tell me why he isn't, uh, doesn't like Ryan Walker for the Habs? Just no upside. Just, uh, I think the most he gets is a solid, maybe third defenseman of the next level. Good physically, can skate well. But I just don't think, compared to the options they had, um, that it would have been my pick at all. Uh, Malcolm, thank you so much for subscribing. But he's the type of player that, like, I don't think is incredibly hard to get in, like, a free agency, for example. Um... I think for the Habs, I mean, it's. I think it's good to have that type of presence defensively in the prospect pool, but I feel like they really could have used also some high upside in the forward group um, a lot. And Reinbacher at five is just a big reach to me. If I was going to go for a defenseman for uh, with a, with, if I was going to go for a defenseman, I would have gone for Simshev, personally. What young defenseman is Montreal trade now that you've picked, uh, that they've picked you, Reinbacher? That's a good question. Uh, I mean, I don't know if, if they trade anyone specifically. Maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know if they trade Jordan Harris. Um, maybe like a Jaden Struble, perhaps. Potentially Justin Barron, maybe. I'm not sure. But the pick right now is live for the Red Wings. We'll see who they end up picking. We'll find out. Benson to Buffalo uh, is just playing criminal. He is so good, and he slides into one of the deepest C-cores in the league. Even as a winger, he'd be tough to crack the roster. Oh, absolute steal in every way. Absolute steal in every way. Andreas! Yes, welcome to the stream, King. Good to have you. Big winger for the Hawks at 19. I mean, Barlow looks to be there. Maybe uh, Musty. I think if Musty's available, he'll be the pick by the, by, by the Blackhawks. It just makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's the thing, though. Like... I, I I feel like I feel like it will be Barlow with his 17th overall pick, and then maybe Winnipeg takes a D. Maybe they takes a uh, Radic Bonk. I don't know. <sighs> this is tough. The pick is in though for the Detroit Red Wings, and we will see who they pick next. We will see who they pick next. I'm thinking. I'm thinking Barlow. What are y'all thinking? Let us know in the chat. What are your predictions for this th for the 17th overall pick? Graf, who do we pick here? I'm so lost. I just want a right winger. If we pick a D-man, then I'm... <laughs> I think for the, I think for the Ra Rangers, I'm still thinking... Uh, maybe David Edstrom, honestly. He makes a lot of sense for the Rangers. The pick is in, though. Steve Eisman already went off the board a little bit, so we'll see if he maybe goes for a more conventional pick here. Franz, thank you so much for subbing. This is the thing, though. Like, with Zach Benson dropping, I like, there's no way, in my opinion, Andrew Crystal goes near, like, the top 20. Like, he's a player that will be in the later first round if he even gets picked in the first round of what we see today. I don't know. I, I Perot does make sense to me as a wing, but I'm not sure. They are, they've already gone a little bit off the board already. But Barlow isn't off the board. But we'll see. This, this, one, this one is going to be a fascinating pick. A fascinating pick. I'm still going Barlow, but Perot could obviously be in there. Obviously, they won't be picking other centermen, that's for sure. So I think that real rules out Oliver Moore personally. Unless they want to put like Marco Casper on the wing, but I don't really see that happening. Does Ottawa have any first round picks? No, they do not. No second or third round picks either. <laughs> it's rough out there. Steve Eisman, though, the second pick in the first round for the Red Wings. We'll see who they end up uh, selecting. 17th overall. Let's see. Oh! Oh! Axel Sandin Palika! Okay! Okay! Uh, that is an interesting pick for the Red Wings, and I mean, I don't, I don't really hate it. I don't really hate it. Ranked the 10th player on my board. Second best defenseman, in my opinion, of this draft. Axel Sandin Palika is going to be a creative beast in detroit i mean he's a player that has so much creativity the evasiveness he has is, is, is outstanding such a good state skater such good uh puck handler and along the blue line is going to just make so many so many forwards lives so difficult with the way he's able to weave around the blue line able to use his deception in such a big way his passing game is strong his transition game is perfection such a good transitional defenseman and the hockey sense he has offensively is great He's not super physical, and I think he will need to bulk up a lot at the next level. He's, but he's 5'11", 181 pounds. He's not tiny. But I think as an offensive defenseman, a player who plays in the power play, is going to be great in transition and can feed guys in front of the net. I think Sandy Palika is going to be really solid in Detroit. Really solid in the Detroit. I like that pick a lot for them. I like that pick a lot. Not too bad, and we'll see as well. I mean, for Detroit, they don't have a lot of 
amazing offensive defenseman in the system. And I think for them, that gives them a lot of flexibility. That gives them a lot of flexibility. And I think Axel Sandin Palika is going to be fabulous on the Red Wings. I think that's a really solid pick for them. We'll see though, man. Again, more Perot and Barlow still, still not picked. This is crazy, man. The Jets have so many opportunities. But again, like I feel like they're gonna pick a D, but how do they how do they pick a D and justify that with the options they have? I don't know. I don't know. Like they have they have like a few top six wingers on their hands right now if they really wanted it. And a top six center, in my opinion, if they really wanted it. But I think they I still I still think they might go for an Oliver Bonk. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Evan, Cider Evans and Axel Sandy Polika is gonna be really interesting. But also don't forget prospects like uh, Shai Boehm and William Willander. A lot of depth within that pool now defensively. And they're building out the right way. Match in Chicago got more. It's totally happening, isn't it? It's totally happening. Oh, it's totally happening, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Chicago's going to get somebody good. I just know. They're either gonna pick a Musty or a Perot, a Barolo or a Moore. It's just gonna, it's just gonna happen. There's no way they don't. Ugh, I'm sad. <laughs> I am a sad boy right now. I'm a really sad boy. Still no trades, by the way. And now the Jets are on the clock with the 18th overall pick. You know what? I'm still thinking Oliver Bonk. I'm still thinking Oliver Bonk. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go out on the limb and still say the Jets still pick a D. Snake with the dono. No. Who should the Chicago pick a 19? Oliver Moore every day. Oliver Moore everyday snake for sure. Um, but besides that, I mean, I think Perot would be really interesting alongside Bedard. Like, amazing alongside Bedard. As just this amazing complimentary player who can play so well with the best of them. Having him alongside Bedard would be amazing. So he would also be up there, I think, for them. But we'll see. The Blackhawks have a wealth of options here. So many. Like, if I'm, a, if I'm any team, I'm trading up right now right now <laughs> where'd you have a uh, guli i have and, Sh and chalet uh for rankings i had guli i have 17th and for chalet i had 27th yeah not surprising that chalet is slipping a little bit too but yeah for the rest of this top 20 again we got winnipeg here we got a uh, winnipeg with the 18th overall pick the pick is in already so they're fast with it we got winnipeg 18th chicago 19th seattle 20th and then minnesota 21st minnesota will be interesting i don't see how more gets past minnesota honestly but i suspected if if uh Hansik was there that he would be the pick there for minnesota he's obviously gone already so we'll see kyle with the two jaeger any model models his game after crosby i mean defensively doesn't really look like it um <laughs> but i i could kind of see it i could kind of see it offensively a little bit not really but sure he wants to if he wants to say he's model after his, his game after Cindy Crosby. I mean, he didn't say successfully. What am I saying? He's a 14th overall pick. I'm just not high on him. <laughs> Thank you again, Kyle, for the dono. Draft is too stacked for trades. True, Eric. Teams know how good these picks are. For sure. Stenberg would be interesting. Stenberg, I think, could definitely be pretty high in, in, in this. I mean, I could see Stenberg being the Kraken pick, honestly. I would not be surprised if he goes in the early 20s. I, I'm still going to predict Oliver Bonk, though, for Winnipeg, because it would be funny as heck. <laughs> I, I think Bonk would be just the most hilarious, so that's why I'm going for it. But then again, they need D in the pool. That's why I, I feel like this is, like, the worst-case scenario of how high Reinbacher, Simashev went... Even actual Sandy Balika, honestly, like it's it's not going to be great for them. But I mean, if they go for a forward, then you don't have that problem. But I think they've already gone so forward heavy these last few drafts. I don't know how. I don't know if they do go for a forward here. But they should. I think they should for sure. I don't. I don't have Oliver Bach even in my top fifty rankings. But I think it's just, just going to happen. It's just going to happen. The pick is in here for the Jets, and they will be announcing the pick here soon. Let us know what we let us know what you guys are predicting right at the final buzzer. Big pick here, though, for the Jets, and they have the potential to get some a big steal here. A huge steal. All right, Kevin Shavadow. Let's see. 
Who will it end up being? Colby Barlow is the pick. Colby Barlow is the pick. There you go. There you go. That's a solid pick by the Jets, man. Very, very solid pick by the Jets. And that's a, that's a that's a pick that I think for them will work out extraordinarily well. Extraordinarily well. I had him ranked 12th in my personal draft rankings, and he goes to the Jets at 16th. But six foot one, 187 pounds, plays like uh, just an absolute truck out there. Uses his physicality so well, and he's a player that's been just an all pro, all character guy all throughout. But even though that skating isn't great for him, I don't think it's a huge problem. Even though there is a bit of of lack of amazing consistency getting that speed at the start and working on his edges that might be something to work on for sure but his shot is great a it's it's unreal his shot is brilliant but it's also the way that he uses his shot the way he's able to get into those high danger areas the way he's able to drive the net he is going to be such a good finisher at the next level and Winnipeg has a lot of solid creators I think alongside a player like Brad Lambert though Lambert with Barlow would be a sick pairing to have but that physical shooting pedigree is a brilliant thing to have. And the hockey sense there is great too. And that anticipation in the play is something that I think Barlow has just so much of in spades. And I think for the Jets, this is a solid pick to make. And I think for them an 18 overall, that's, a, that's just a good value pick. That's just a good value pick. But now that means that the Chicago Blackhawks will have either more pro, musty. I mean, the options are limitless. The options are limitless. But I like that pick still for the Jets. I do. But yeah, I am really scared that the Black Ops will end up picking more. I am definitely afraid right now. I am so terrified. <laughs> right now, though, we've got 1,500 in the chat. Thank you guys so much for joining us. As we get to the second half of this first round, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Thank you again to all the donors tonight. You guys have been killing it so much, and we appreciate your love. It's been such a fun stream so far, and we're going to keep going. Yeah, no trades yet. No trades. I think 40 goals is laughable, but I can see a consistent 25-30 goal man as long as he evolves. Yeah, I think 30 goals makes sense. As a solid penalty-killing 30-goal physical pl uh, player, I think the Jets are really going to like him. Please don't get more Chicago. They don't deserve to be this good. Yeah, more in Bedard would be nasty. I'm just telling you right now, for all the Blackhawks fans in here, you guys should be going for you guys should be going more 100 percent Like, there's no competition. There should be no thought if you're the Blackhawks. I like Perot, and I think he'd be really good alongside Bedard. But more just has that upside that I think the Blackhawks will really crave. Yeah, Barlow at 18. Solid pick. Solid pick for the Jets. What do I rank uh, Morat at eighth overall? And the thing is, he's one of the best skaters of this draft. Has one of the mo uh, has one of the best offensive ceilings, in my opinion. He's not going to blow you away defensively or anything, and but that's not what you're getting Oliver Moore for. But I, I think he's still pretty good in that area. He, he has good awareness and good positioning, uh, even if he isn't like super flashy in his own end. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a problem for him. He's but he's one of the best transitional players in the entire draft, and one of the best straight line skaters. I, I, I think Moore is a player that. Can have some questionable can have some questionable uh moments like he's a player that can make weird passes sometimes and i think that's something that he just having that situational awareness can be something that will have to improve if you're more but at the same time like i don't think there's many questions outside of that the physical play isn't great but that, again that, that's not what he is that's not who, that's not who he's gonna be I'm so afraid Chicago will pick more. Love this channel. Great. And 98. Thank you, Chicago, for the five. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm a I'm a Stars fan, man. I, I already have to see you guys have Connor Bedard. And uh, I'm already I'm already crying. I'm already crying. So <laughs> and, and if Chicago could just pick like Oliver Bonk here and lessen the blow, I would appreciate that. But they're definitely they're definitely picking more. Let's be real. Let's be let's be let's be 110% real. It's 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 absolutely gonna be. It's absolutely gonna be. I'm sorry <laughs> uh i'm so sad to say it i'm so sad to say it but thank you again chicago appreciate you this is the first draft i watched in a long time well wyatt welcome it's good to have you here can't have too many centers they can play wing too exactly derby Do any you see any of these players already picked not making it to the bigs? Um, I feel like if anybody, that's tough. 
I would say the most likely players out of this top 20 to not make the NHL um, would probably be, I could see a situation where Braden Yeager isn't able to adapt to the pro game. Uh, maybe Daniel Butte isn't able to fix some of those skating issues he has. Um, maybe the I mean, same thing as well with Matthew Wood, perhaps. Maybe that speed of the NHL just isn't something he can adapt to or even the pro level. I would say those are the players that that would be the biggest ones but i think it mostly comes down to that skating as long as you're like a solid skater and you have those good fundamentals i think you'll be good i think you'll at least make the nhl but that that is usually what limits a lot of players axel sandy plika maybe like maybe if like he really gets caved in and, and it doesn't really work on his physical traits and isn't able to really increase that physical prowess um that could be something that ha haunts him a lot but i don't know <laughs> come on man i'm a pence man i need this i'm so sorry hunter <laughs> that's all i can say i'm so sorry eugene thank you for subscribing the blackhawks pick is in y'all let us know down below what you guys are predicting it's gonna be more though it's gonna be more i i'm just i'm just i'm just accepting the worst man it's definitely gonna be more it's definitely gonna be more now, if there's any team that maybe takes uh, Andrew Crystal, maybe it's Chicago. Maybe it's Chicago, but I, I don't know if I would predict that. We'll see. We'll see what the selection is. Chicago, 19th overall. Sarvin, all his vids are clickbait. Uh, this is a subscriber only chat, so unsubscribe then, coward. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> um, of course, of course, man. Oliver Moore, welcome to the Chicago Blackhawks, man. I, of course, of course. What a pick. What a pick. Uh, <laughs> I would prepare myself. I didn't prepare myself. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. And I have to gas more up because I love this kid and he's going to be such a good Blackhawk. Oh, he's going to be so good. Oh. One of the best skaters of this draft. One of the best puck handlers of this draft. One of the best passers of this draft. Even though the physicality isn't great, he manages it himself and is a good pr puck protector still. Solid shooter. Solid playmaker. And he's a player that just has such a great offensive ceiling with the way he reads the game. There might be some problem with decision making at that high end level, but that's the only thing I could see more really having a problem with besides that the sky is the friggin limit with this kid and so far that's the best pick of the draft in terms of pure value in terms of if we're talking pure value that's the best pick of the draft And of course, the Blackhawks are the one to make the best pick of the draft. Because, um... I'm sad. <laughs> uh, unbelievable, man. Congratulations to the Blackhawks. What a friggin' draft, man. Bedard and Moore. Bedard and Moore. That's just... Oh, that's just... That's just... Oh, <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll see. Now, I, got, I forgot to uh, put in my Wisconsin hat. Now that now that the, we're getting to like the Rangers territory, I feel like now we could see Charlie Stramel picked. Oh boy, Chicago hockey with a two. Anytime you can come to the Empire, uh, Chicago Empire, or anytime. Grab. Uh, I'll have to reject that offer. <laughs> I'll have to reject that offer.
But man, I mean, now now Seattle has so many options though. Still, they can still got Perot on the board. I, I think for Seattle, Perot might be an interesting one, especially with how many centers they have. Perot would be pretty fascinating. But maybe they go for a D here. Maybe they go for a D. Oh man. Hey, Chicago Hockey, thank you once again. King! King! Oh, boy. It's only King. Why does this have to be men? Silo, thank you so much for subscribing. Now we can look as well for the rest of these picks because uh, we got a lot of interesting ones. We got Seattle, then Minnesota, then Philadelphia. I'm going to say for Seattle, I think, they, I think they are the team to end up taking Gabriel Perot. Um, which would leave for Minnesota kind of them in no man's land. Not a lot of centers available after that. Um, maybe they take Grayson Sachin. Ooh. Actually, no, I think I think Minnesota would take Callum Ritchie. I think it'll go. I think it'll go Perot, Callum Ritchie. Then for Philadelphia, I think they're going to go for Quinton Musty. I think Philadelphia is going to be a, a, Quin a Quinton Musty team, which I hope so, because I love Quinton Musty, man. I love me some Quinton Musty. David, the Blackhawks are my least favorite team, and I'm a Dallas Stars fan, so what do you want me to do? <laughs> I'm not hating on them. I'm literally saying they had the best pick of the draft. <laughs> what do you want from me? What do you want from me, David? I'm already having a bad time. <sighs> Anyways. <laughs> Where do you see Stenberg going? Stenberg, I, I, don't, I don't know. Stenberg, because I, like I feel like Seattle could, could make it happen. Um, I don't feel like it goes past Nashville at 24. I'll say that. Samurai with a five. Go, Hacks, go. Good draft for them so far, man. We'll see if it continues. Seattle's pick is in. Seattle's pick is in. Let us know in the chat. What do you guys think is going to be Seattle's pick tonight? I'm going Gabe. I'm going Gabe. Why is Bro dropping? I, I just feel like for maybe a lot of teams, he's a little bit more of a rover on his own line. He's not going to be a player that drives play exceedingly well. He's a great complimentary player, and that might be something that uh, they aren't looking for, perhaps. Um, but we'll see. Thank you, Samurai, again for the donation. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, I don't. I forgot how to spell Samurai. <laughs> Oopsies. Oopsies. I think Seattle drafts Musty for chemistry with Goyette. Maybe a connection there. Maybe a connection. All right, uh, Seattle, what will it be? Oh, Edward Shawley. Wow. What? Interesting pick by the Seattle Kraken. Very interesting pick by the Seattle Kraken right there. I mean, Shawley is kind of a confusing player for me. Um, he has some really great skating characteristics, really great puck handling. I mean, the Deeks he can pull off are fantastic he's a player that can shoot the puck well decently even if i want to see him use it a little bit more but not a very physical player even though he's taller at six foot 168 pounds i think adding some more muscle will be huge but i like him as just like maybe a solid uh five on five offensive zone playmaker and for maybe like a maybe like a second line for the kraken perhaps i'm not sure but he's definitely gonna be playing wing there i don't love his transition game and he's a player that i'm fascinated that was picked before gabriel gabriel because to me, I think Perot has a lot more of a transition ability than Chalet. And I think Chalet is going to be a little bit more of a complimentary player than even Perot will be. But I do think Chalet might fit decently in, with the Kraken. Definitely wouldn't have been my pick, but I can see where they were coming from. Gavin, thank you so much for subscribing as well as Skyler. Appreciate it. Hello, thank you for subscribing as well. I, I definitely want to see him use that, that shot more uh, for sure, Evilist. Um, because it's something that I don't think he uses in the right ways, but we'll see. Jason with the two. Two bucks to take off the Wisco hat. Go, go for it. <laughs> Jason, how dare you? I'm just trying to hype. I'm just trying to hype up Charlie Strim, my boy. Thank you, Jason, for the two. Let me get you. Um, 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 um. There we go. There we go. Last donator. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I can. If you guys don't know. Um, uh, my girlfriend goes to Wisconsin as the 
head of socials there with the hockey team and gotta rep gotta rep every single badger i can gotta rep every single badger i can man this is cool this is crazy though thank you De again jason for the dono i don't know if i can do it i don't know if i can do it <laughs> but yeah now philadelphia now minnesota and philadelphia next stop i think for minnesota man i mean I, I, Callum Ritchie, I think, would have been the pick. But again, you got Perot still available. In terms of best players available now, for me, um, uh, looks like uh, for me, it would be Musty, then Brindley, then Perot, then Goliayev, then Crystal, then Stenberg, then Sachin, then Ritchie, then perfect pick. Oh, wait, why did the. Oh, what the heck? OBS, like, disconnected for like one second. Very weird. We got 13 in still in the chat, though. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Let us know. What are you guys predicting for Minnesota? I'm going to go Callum Ritchie. Let us know. TP says to check the sub count. Um, 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 um. Oh, 70,200. Thank you guys so much. Holy crap. You guys are killing it. Thank you to all the new subs today. You guys are insane. Thank you for 70K. Unbelievable. Minnesota's pick is in. Now 70.2K hype. Now the pick is in for Minnesota. I'm going to say Richie here. What are your thoughts on the Red Wings picks? Uh, I would say solid. Nothing that's amazing, but nothing that's, uh, I think, going to be horrible for them. I'm gonna save Richie though. Still, I feel like Minnesota goes for a center. I, I just, I don't, I don't really see a chance that they don't. Why the heck did Fancilli and Michkov both have to land on the Metro? Oh, that's brutal, Golovich. <laughs> that's brutal. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that. Oh man. Now Minnesota's taking a long time to get this pick go uh, going though. Only, it's only game. As long as you get to be mad. Thank you, Martin, for subscribing. Holson will jump into the first round, really. Only, I don't know about that. I mean maybe maybe in like one of the late like last couple of picks, possibly. Bacon, what's going on? My second and third least favorite teams literally got my two favorite prospects. <laughs> brutal. Brutal. I'm so sorry, Govich. I'm so sorry. Reinbacher, first, future first line D-man, maybe an okay second guy, but I would not ever, I would not ever bet on him being a first, a number one defenseman, in my opinion. Sniper shooter, what's going on? Please assure me with the hat, reassure me with the half swinging Reinbacher. That might be a little bit tough. Um, I like his skating, I like his physical traits. That's very good with him. Got lo lo a lot of uh, poise. Besides that, don't really love him. <laughs> <laughs> but he'll be a solid player for sure for sure very solid floor minnesota making their selection we'll see who they go for here i predicted richie but we'll see come on minnesota just like get it done i don't care we'll see who does minnesota take 21st overall Oh! Whoa! Charlie Strable, 21st overall to the Minnesota Wild. Wow! That is crazy. That is crazy. Charlie Strable, 21st overall to the Minnesota Wild, a pro player in a lot of different ways. Just solid in a lot of different ways, too. Um, and to me, Strable is... Just a, a going to be a really interesting project. Has a huge, huge floor. But I love his puck protection abilities. I love the way he he plays along the boards, the physicality he brings. That's going to be a solid middle six center for the Wild for a while. Uh, and even though he might not have like potential of other prospects, I, I think he's going to be a really interesting player for the Wild and a really interesting pick. Twenty first overall, 
I would have got a little bit higher than where I had him. I had him at uh, 26th overall, but I don't think it's that big of a reach for what Minnesota needs. He's going to be a pure centerman, and Minnesota definitely does need that. So doesn't make doesn't make a uh, doesn't really surprise me. We'll see though. We'll see. <laughs> man, now 23rd overall. The New York Rangers, man. Who are the New York Rangers gonna pick? Who are the New York Rangers gonna pick? Um, um, um. I I feel like they go for a center, but I I. I feel like they go Quinton Musty. I feel like they go Quinton Musty. I I just have a feeling. I'm going to say Musty because I really want it to happen. Musty would be a, a great pick for the Rangers. But we'll see. Musty would be awesome. Who is the first goalie you see going? Ravel? Definitely Ravel. Um, Maybe Bjarnason after that. We'll see. Why is Perot dropping? I honestly don't know why he's dropping this far. I can't give you a good explanation. Honestly. Um, again, he doesn't... He isn't the best play driver by himself, but I don't know. Like, I, I don't really... There's not, like, a lot of big holes in Perot's game. Um, like, his skating isn't amazing, I guess. But I don't think it really needs to be, personally. And, and he's not super... He's not incredibly physical. That might be the biggest thing, I guess. He is obviously not huge. He's 5'11". But still pretty crazy that Perot's dropping this high. Or this this low. Yeah, no trade still. No trade still. New York might drop down, though. I, want, I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, solid pick by the Wild. 21st overall with Stramel. And now we got the Flyers pick as well as the Rangers pick coming up here. And then after that, it'll be the Preds. Jays with a two. Still no trades. I don't, I honestly, yeah, like it's, that's the craziest thing to me. That's the craziest thing. No trades. No trades. I can't. I honestly can can can't believe it. Um, like that was the last thing I was predicting. Like the I, I that's the most surprising part of this draft for sure is that we haven't seen a single trade, a single one. But do you think the least take Quinton Quinn Musty? I think if he's available, I think so. I think so. I mean, the Sharks draft we want to trade. <laughs> Bro driving because of size and he doesn't play drive very well. He's a very effective support player, but his transition metrics are poor. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I, I feel like that's that could cause a lot of of, of worries. Um, I think he's a, I, I think in leak play, he's been a really solid transition player, but not like a player that's going to be driving a line or anything. Um, and that could, that could, that might be, again, the thing that he's a support player that isn't big, that isn't very physical and doesn't skate amazingly. And, you know, when you think about it that way, it can make sense. It can make sense. I think he should have been drafted by now, but it makes sense. The pick is in for the Philadelphia Flyers. We'll see who they go for here. Oh, back-to-back -back Donos, Michael and Shaggy with the fives. Just during the stream, quick thoughts on the Kraken pick. I think it's really interesting. Uh, Chale is a really good shooter. Has some great hands. He's a player that I like. I would like to see be a little more physical. I'd like to see Drive play a little bit more himself. I'd like to see a little bit more... A little bit more consistent with his offensive game but i think he's a player that has some good tools for sure and if he's able to rebound i think could do some really interesting things uh and shaggy with the five the cap had gone up like it was supposed to we'd see trades guaranteed true 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 yeah i agree i, I like zachary saying he has 100 points i mean yeah I, I don't think i he was a top 15 prospect to me but um that's what i would assume gms are concerned about What's your favorite team after Dallas? It goes Dallas, Tampa, Montreal. Oh, man. Oh, man. Next round is when the trades happen. Yeah, usually there's a lot of, like, going up and going down in the draft, especially after the first round. We'll see, though. Oh, man. Oh, man. This, this, this whole draft has been nuts, and I've had such a fun time... Uh, talking about it with you guys it's been unreal oh man 
<laughs> wow okay philly okay i mean that's that's not really too surprising rad uh radic bonk son oliver bonk goes 22nd overall to the philadelphia flyers yeah that doesn't surprise me i'm kind of surprised philadelphia were, was the team to make it happen but um oliver bonk was not what was not in my top 50 draft rankings um for a multitude of different reasons uh to me when it came to bonk let me actually pull up uh what i've had on him as well um but the thing is i i feel like with bonk he's gonna be if he if he works out for you he's gonna be like a solid fifth guy maybe maybe fourth maybe a fourth defenseman that's like the best you're gonna get but to me he wasn't a top 50 prospect just because of the lack of amazing potential he's a fine skater he's a fine shooter he's a fine puck handler he has okay hockey sense at best he's an okay passer like just a lot of averageness and there just wasn't a lot of amazing results that i saw i don't think he was amazing defensively like some people say um but i think he'll be an okay defenseman i think he'll be okay um i i just don't see a lot of upside in that pick at all um and definitely wouldn't have been mine but fill it with the 10 grab what do you think of the winnipeg jets future forward core oh it's it's sick it's looking really good it's looking really good but yeah bonk is the pick and you know what for pure name uh, name value why not <laughs> pure name value why not now the rangers have a ton of options perot musty i mean they have a lot of options here with this 23rd overall pick we'll see what they go for but uh i don't know i feel like they gotta go musty i feel like they gotta go musty matt i'm here welcome to the stream matt <laughs> pick some crap please i mean honestly the best you can hope for right now golvich is that they pick a player like uh david edstrom who i like but would definitely be a positional pick for sure no pro yep no pro picked which is wild we'll see Will the Rangers end up picking a Perot? I think it's Musty, though, man. That's what I'm hoping for, especially. I really hope Musty's the pick for the Rangers. That would be a great selection. A fantastic selection. Man, Oliver Bonk, though. That's that, that is pure namesake. Pure namesake? It's, it's elite. Or I guess I guess Musty's the left winger. What am I talking about? <laughs> oh no, never mind. Yeah, never mind. It's definitely not gonna be Musty. It's definitely not gonna be Musty then. That's the thing. Like, yeah, they're not picking another left winger. Definitely not. Uh, maybe Perot then. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it might. I think it might be David Edstrom. I mean, Callum Ritchie though. I, I'm not, it might be Callum Ritchie. It could be Callum Ritchie. That wouldn't surprise me. Pro won't pass, uh, fall past Carolina at three. No way. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not to know. Definitely not. <laughs> Stenberg would be a good pick. I, I would like that. Thank you, as a gnome. Appreciate the dono. Let me get you up there now. Okay. Hey, and Jason, you should do some more Stars content. Boo, Wisco. <laughs> I do need to. I do. I should just keep, I just should just make videos on how uh, Jason Robertson is the best player in the NHL. The 23rd pick is in. The Rangers have now locked it in. They won't be trading this pick. Again, another pick that goes by with no trade. No trade. Looks like a pretty quick uh, pick there by the Rangers, honestly. Bedard and Moore, great draft. Chicago just got back. Oh, it's an unreal, unreal draft. Unreal draft by the Blackhawks in every way. I say Harabo goes to the Sharks at 36, I believe it is. Yeah, I think the Sharks will definitely um, pick a D-man here. Or a goalie with that pick.
Bro is a right winger. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I, I'm I'm gonna predict Musty because I want it to happen. I want it to happen. But no, never mind. It, it's not, it's not gonna happen. I just love Musty. I just want him to go high. But no, it's 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 probably gonna be a David Enstrom. Callum Ritchie could be up there too. There were some rumors though that the Rangers were looking at at David Edstrom earlier. Um, the same guy that predicted the Rangers that uh, picking Offman said that the Rangers would be picking David Edstrom. So we'll see. Michael, probably a couple rounds. Thank you for the 690. Also, free NC day stream. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got you. We got you. Thank you, Michael, for the dono. Appreciate you, King. All right, let's see who the Rangers select here. All right, 20 with this pick. Oh, baby, Gabe Perot. Gabe Perot. Let's go, baby. That's a good pick still. That is a good pick. Gabe Perot going to the New York Rangers. Wow. Wow. Now, that's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. I mean, we've already, we've already talked about Perot a lot because of how much he's dropped. But that was incredible. That's an incredible pick by the Rangers in a lot of ways. He'll be a complimentary player but can play with the best players in the league and really get the max amount of value. I could see him going alongside Mika Zbigniewicz and doing great things there. He's not the greatest skater, not the most physical player, but his puck handling, his awareness of the ice is top tier. He, he's a player that always knows where to be, always knows where to put himself, always knows where to put his stick, how to create plays, get in deep. And he's a player that's going to score. He's going to get in hard. He's going to be a solid middle six player. Actually, no, he'll probably, he'll probably be a player on that first line that's on your first line right wing, but is such a good, pure offensive player that I think for the Rangers, that is a great pick to make. That is a great pick to make and a huge dub. If you're a Rangers fan, get some W's in the chat. That is a fantastic pick by the New York Rangers. Unbelievable. You'd love to see it. You'd love to see it. How the Rangers ruined the visit development? I guess we will find out. <laughs> We'll see, though. Now we got the Blues coming up here with the next pick, uh, or the Preds and then the Blues with the next pick. Then we got the Sharks at 26. I don't know, man. This is this is interesting. I think this is where Otto Stenberg goes. I think this is where Otto Stenberg goes, that 24th overall pick to Nashville. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking right now. Finally, an actual right wing. At this point, I bet no trades. Honestly, like, it's been barren. And we haven't even heard a lot of rumor rumors or anything either. Like, I'm kind of disappointed <laughs> in that way for sure. A little, I can't, like, can we get can we get some L's in the chat for the NHL GMs right now? They're all out there and no, literally zero trades have been made. Zero. None. <laughs> None. Uno trade. Zero. No less than uno trades. Zero trades. It's awful, man. It's awful and it, and we don't deserve this we don't deserve this i want kyle to, davidson to trade back in the first and get crystal or musty i can see it i can see it i got the uh, wisconsin app for charlie stramel now a minnesota draft player the only player i saw live this year uh i saw a couple of times in, in wisconsin 1200 people in the chat thank you guys so much for coming in and appreciate you guys all so much thank you so much for coming in tonight and every one of you guys have been unbelievable i'll have to call it in a few minutes time um but uh thank you guys for all the support and we'll be trying to get through as many picks as possible before i have to go but thank you guys again for joining us and if you haven't hit that subscribe already make sure you do so because we'll be there for tomorrow's day two live stream throughout all those picks and likely a lot of trades tomorrow as well i remember it was a few years ago there was i think it might have been 2019 but there was no trades in the first round and then like billions in like the second round specifically so there could be a lot going down then and we'd hope to see you there for that and video coming out later as well so make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell as well so you don't get and don't miss any of those videos because we'll be given we'll be giving you to giving it to you all throughout these next few days and afterwards we'll be transitioning onto the 2024 nhl draft which is looking amazing as well so you won't want to go anywhere. Three likes for everyone, 969. True. Hit that like button, y'all. <laughs> Gold Knights, I have not picked yet. Notable players still remaining you would consider a steal at this point. Um, Quinton Musty, for sure. He's probably, uh, Gavin Brindley, I would consider a steal at that at this point. Those would be the only two I would consider actual steals, though. 
Wiki, thank you so much for subscribing. Pick is in for the National Predators, and they got another big one here. We'll see who they end up selecting. Hey, how other teams help the Rangers with stuff like this? <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining. Who do you think the Knights will choose? If Grayson Sachin is there, I think it'll be Grayson Sachin. Where do you think Brindley goes? Would love to see Tom jump up in the draft and take him. I think if Car I think he doesn't get past Carolina. I think 30th overall, that's where he would most likely go. But I could also see a situation where maybe Colorado takes him 27th. But they got a couple first round picks. I mean, they're a team that I thought was going to trade a lot in this first and hasn't done anything yet. Yes, Shaggy, we will be live for free agency. Do not worry. Thank you for the Dodo King. Love you, man. But yes, we will be live for free agency. Do not worry about that. Do not worry about that. We got you. We got you. Also, y'all, um, after the stream two, we put out a video earlier today talking about potential draft steals in the 2023 draft. And a lot of players as well that are likely going to be available in the second round um, are a part of that video. The second, third round, fourth round. So if you are any at all interested in players that could be draft steals later on in this draft that your team could end up stagging, make sure you watch that video we released just this afternoon. We'd love to have you there. What number are we at right now? Right now, 24. Nashville is about to announce their pick. Jeff Molson owes me a new TV. <laughs> Zach, what's going on? Can't believe Barlow fell out low and Stenberg hasn't been picked. Yeah, Barlow falling where he did was surprising. Considering the physical goal scoring tools he has, I was surprised he, like, I'm surprised GMs are, weren't absolutely drooling over him. Honestly. Stenberg is a little bit less surprising, but I think he does. Like, this to me should be the pick for the Preds. It would be an amazing pick here at 27, 24. How do you feel about the Knights training Smith and resigning Barbashev? It's fine. I mean, I, I don't, I, I feel like it's okay. Oh. Oh, are they gonna, they're gonna, I think they're about to announce the pick at the Predators draft party or something. They got Yossi and, uh, and Rene out there. Announcing it here. I'm pretty sure. Feelings about Newhook for a first round pick and a second round pick. It's definitely an overpay right now, but I mean, Newhook can do, uh, Marty St. Louis can do some magical things. So we'll see if he uh, can do the same with Alex Newhook there. Who do they pick? I don't recognize this player. Tanner Molendyke! Oh, baby! Oh, baby. Tanner Molendyke. I, in a, in a mock draft, a couple, I think my last mock draft, did I have, I'm pretty sure I had Tanner Molendyke being the Predators pick. There we go, baby. There we go. Tanner Molendyke, the pick for the Preds. I like that a lot. I like that a lot for the Preds. Now, not as high. I had them 29th overall in my rankings and definitely a lot higher than a lot of people have had him. But Tanner Molendyke is a fascinating player. Um, and I, I think he's, uh, I think he's so interesting. Um, hold on, let me, let me, let me pull him up real quick. Let me pull him up real quick. Yeah, I mean with Tanner Molinak, he's not huge, five foot eleven, hundred not seventy six pounds, but he's the type of player I think alongside some of the prospects they've already picked will do some really good things. His skating is elite, like genuinely. Besides maybe Simashev, the best of any defenseman of this class. He's so good at evading pressure, so good at getting around that pressure in his own zone. And, getting around for checking and he, he's just unbelievable in that department his puck handling is solid and i like his physical play too for his size even though i don't think it's going to be his bread and butter but he's a player that i think his shooting game is remarkable he's a little bit predictable at points but i like the i like the floor that he provides i like the skills that he provides he's a player that has a lot of raw skill but a lot of, a lot of defensive play that is quite underrated too um from elite prospects among whl defensemen this last year he was in the 94th percentile of defensemen defensively Put up some really good numbers there. And I don't know how much that'll translate. I still think he'll be more of an offensive D, but I think he's a guy that can be really underrated as a two-way player and a player that maybe is your third defenseman, perhaps. I could see it. We'll see. I, li I like that pick, though, for the Preds. I like that pick a lot. Wasn't a player that I think a lot of people had going in the first round, but I like that he does. I like that he did, honestly. I really do like that he did. All right. Ugh. Hmm. 
Man, that's a solid pick, though, I think, for the Preds. It's not anything that's overly flashy, but that's a solid pick for them. That's a solid pick for them. And especially with their D, they're a little bit lacking prospect-wise. All right, so now that we're towards the tail end of the first round, now we're going to be grading every single pick in this 2023 first round and we're going to be going as we go so this will be also a clip that's released later on the channel so hopefully you guys uh check that out as well but we're going to go all the way back to the first overall pick here going all the way for the first round and we are going to see who has the best options actually let me um let me put this out because let me let me make sure okay here we go where was it Okay, grading every pick in the first round. All right, so now we're going to go back and we're going to go through and we are going to rate and grade every single pick that every single one of these teams made. Now, we'll see what actually happens here, but I have a feeling, I have a feeling I might have some hot takes here. I have a feeling I might have some hot takes. So we are now going to grade the first round round the entire first round every single pick in this first round so if you guys are new hit that subscribe button hit that like button if you're enjoying and we're gonna get straight into it here with the first overall pick in Connor Bedard and this is an easy one I mean you give just an A plus I mean there's no ifs and buts about it I think for the Blackhawks you get an A plus for Connor Bedard there's no exceptions there wasn't any choice but Connor Bedard is a franchise changing face for the Blackhawks but we already knew he was gonna be the pick so it doesn't uh, it doesn't really matter but with what they did after that, too, is what really is surprising as well. Then going on to the second overall pick and the Ducks getting Leo Carlson. This was the really the big first shakeup of this 2023 draft. Most of the hype leading up to this draft was Adam Fantilli being their second pick. But they go for Leo Carlson, who provides some great playmaking and some great and a great skill set physically. But he's a player that I don't quite prefer over Adam Fantilli but I can see why the Ducks would go after it. It wouldn't have been my pick, but I think it's still a first-line center for the future, so I'm going to give the pick a straight B. As for the Columbus Blue Jackets, we're going to go back to the A-plus category because you got Adam Fantilli at third overall, and that is a slam dunk. I mean, if he went second overall, to me, he would have been the second best second overall pick since Jack Eichel, and he goes third. That's just unfair, and now Columbus is in a position where they can build around Fantilli in a big way. Then to San Jose, you got Will Smith with the pick. And to me, this is a solid one. Just like Leo Carlson, I'm going to give this a B. Fantastic creativity and a really interesting skill set in the future. We'll see if San Jose can really use all of that. But to me, that'll be a huge part of things. Then at number five, you got David Reinbacher. To me, this is really the biggest skeptical one. Because to me, Reinbacher wasn't even the best defenseman of this draft. He was my third ranked defenseman of this draft. And I could see why the Habs would go for it. He brings some good skating and physical tool set to him, and he is really composed, really consistent, and you know what you're getting. But to me, that's the problem. You know what you're getting in David Reinbacher, and he's not going to be a player that, in my opinion, is a first-pairing first guy, or at least a dominant one, a first uh, defenseman on an NHL team. To me, Reinbacher will more likely settle into a second or third role, and I think with the players they, they kind of gave up on, they passed over, uh, it wouldn't have been my pick personally. Then going on, uh, and then for that Reinbacher pick, I'm going to give it just a straight D. Now for the Simichet pick, we got the Coyotes here at sixth overall. They go for another D man here, and it's wild. I initially thought the Coyotes might go for Reinbacher. They go for Simichet here, and I think for the Coyotes, they're in an interesting spot. I, I think Simichet, I'm going to give this pick a D plus. It's not amazing by any means, and I feel like there was also the chance that the Coyotes might have traded down and still gotten Simichev. But to me, he's the best defensive prospect of this draft class. Actually, you know what? I'm going to give it a C minus just because I like Simichev, show, Simichev so much with his skating profile and the way he plays the game defensively. And his offensive game has been improving as well a lot. So I think if Arizona can, can put him in a big situation and use that physical size in a big way, I think he could become a top pairing guy. And I think he has the potential to be one of the best players in this draft. So at sixth overall, I think that's a lot more justifiable than the David Reinbacher pick, in my personal opinion. Then at number seven, you got the Flyers going ahead and getting Mappy Michkov. And to me, this is a straight A pick. This is a really risky one, obviously, with the issues that Michkov presents with that three-year KHL contract. But the Flyers are in a unique position where they can wait, they can spend that time. And if he does come over, if he does bring that skill set, he's going to be a first-line player. He's going to be a dominant guy at the next level. And for the Flyers, I think that's going to be brilliant for them. 
Um, I'll just give it a straight A on that one. As for the Capitals of the eighth overall pick, they got the Ryan Leonard selection. I think this is also a solid one. I'm going to give this a C plus. I think for Ryan Leonard, he was ranked seventh for me. He comes in number eight, and I don't hate the pick at all. Brings some great physicality, some great composure, some great leadership, and just an all-around amazing offensive skill set. I think the Caps are really going to love him at his play pushing and driving the net and everything, especially alongside a good playmaker. I think Leonard could be really quite solid. But that's going to be it for today's live stream. We're going to be ranking as well more and grading more after this. I'm going to be recording some more after this. But thank you guys so much for joining us for the day one live stream for the 2023 NHL draft. I guess I'll just end it off as well with um, what happened in the rest of things so far. So you got Otto Stenberg, 25th overall. That's a solid pick by the Blues. But we'll be grading every single pick right after this. So do not go anywhere. We'll see you guys just in that. And also, if you guys need some more content, for us right now from us as well uh just earlier we released a video talking about potential draft steals of the 2023 draft so if you want you have a lot of picks in the second or third round definitely definitely go click on that video and and get some knowledge on the later prospects in this draft but thank you guys so much for joining us and thank you so much for having me during day one of the nhl draft i appreciate you all so much and i'll see you soon in the video tonight and the stream tomorrow and i'll see you in the next one have a great day and goodbye